Blog Talk Radio. Good evening, everybody, and welcome back to another episode of Let's Talk Jets Radio, a Victory Tuesday edition, two weeks in a row. This team is incredible. Adam Gase is incredible. Sam Darnold's incredible. Jamal Adams is a hero. Everything is great. We're going to the playoffs. We're not going to lose for the next two years. Life is goddamn good, man. This is Jets football. Everybody gets a promotion. Everybody gets re-signed. Everything is great. Long Beach Show, what's up, man? Okay. Uh, <laughs> I don't know about all that. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm definitely, you know, keeping a, a cool, calm, collected head about myself. But it's good to have a victory. I'm excited about that. And I know everyone's going to call it tonight. Good hey, team, hey, find listen, a way to win. You know, We're a good team. Hey, Three and seven, baby. <laughs> Woo! Hey, listen. Hey, listen. You know, I, you know, I know you're making fun of people right now, but there, there are people that are excited about it, and there's nothing wrong with that. But let's just – Let's keep a, a, a cool, collected head and realize where we're at and who we beat. You know what I'm saying? So let's just just let's just keep that in mind. You know what I'm saying? But hey, I'm excited about it. It's good to get a win. But listen, I'm the man of the people. I'm here for the people that shape to promote our Facebook page. Everyone go on Facebook, search Let's Talk Jets Radio. Like that page. Our content's up there as well. Go ahead and give it a listen. Message us. We'll message you right back. We love going back and forth with folks about this football team. Also, leave us some feedback. We love hearing about what you folks think we do here on Let's Talk Jets Radio. So without further ado, Ty, let's go ahead and get into the show, man. I'm fired up. I'm fired up too, man. Two wins in a row. The sky is the limit. The world is on our side. Everything is great. So we got Instagram and Twitter, at Talk Jets Radio. YouTube, Let's Talk Jets Radio. And, and just a, a quick side note, Joe. See, I was just sitting here minding my own business. I'm like, you know what? Let me go on the Let's Talk Jets Radio YouTube channel and see what's going on there. Lots of comments. Yeah. And then, lo and behold, Prime Time throws a video up there. Haven't seen a video in a couple mm-hmm. weeks. He's been doing his thing. I'm like, all right, you know, give him a break. You know, we, we work him kind of hard. I understand that. And, dude, when I do my videos, see, you guys gave me no filter, but I, see, I, I worry about our audience. I give the audience the implicit, explicit language warning. So here I am, uh-huh. an innocent listener, and I put on Primetime's video, and lo and behold, Joe, he blew my ears off. You think I need a filter? You better watch, you better watch Primetime. Primetime went complete Hollywood on us. He just let loose, and my ears were like, holy cow. What am I listening to here? So not only do you have to worry well, about me, you got to worry about him now. Yeah, well, I'm pretty sure he took his cues from you. You have com- clearly influenced him <laughs> to start going off as well. So I want to thank you for that, too, as usual, Mr. Rouse being a bad influence. But, you know, he, he, he spoke his mind in his video, you know, but it is what it is, man. we gotta we got to filter this stuff, man, but, you know, we'll talk about that later. <laughs> I love this YouTube. No filters on YouTube. So, if this show happens to bore you and you don't like you don't like the way we talk, go on YouTube. I guarantee you can relate to us. At least me in prime time. Joe's still professional. Joe is very professional <laughs> and he stays very composed. He's very well thought out and very well spoken. I just fly from the hip. I don't give a rat's ass. It just comes out. So yeah. if you want to be entertained, yeah. go to YouTube, subscribe there. Um, we're on Spreaker, iTunes, SoundCloud, all the Apple Podcasts, nine two nine four seven seven two six five one. And Joe the Jets are going to win five in a row. We, I have seen the last. Adam Gase, Adam Gase is the hero that we always thought we needed, and we finally figured okay. out that it's him. I mean, we got Sam going to him. He's listening to him. Jamal Adams is playing. And here's the key, Joe. I've learned my lesson. Because I, was, I learned my lesson from Twitter. Twitter taught me a very important lesson over the last two days. When the New York okay. Jets win, when they, when they win, it's all about going in the right direction. It's good coaching. It's all this. When they lose, it's injuries. So when they lose, it's all about the injuries. The injuries hold us back. And when they win, they're okay. great. Adam Gase is great. And everything is perfect. That's how it works. Okay. <laughs> well, you know, I, I tell you what. Uh, you know, this is a good win. Um, I'll take a win any way I can get it. I've always said that. But I think we have to keep perspective. And that's, that's what I'm, I'm going to say. Keep pounding home with Jets fans. We, we got to keep perspective of what's going on here. I know we're so used to losing. We're so used to just being downtrodden. And when we finally do string together some victories or get a victory, we kind of, you know, go a little bit overboard. Um, we have to keep in mind, you know, this two-game winning streak. Look at the, t- t- the two teams we beat. We beat a Giants team that was bad, and they weren't at full strength either. They were missing a lot of pieces. And then we walk into a Redskins team that just looks 
they looked horrible. And, I mean, I know we've looked bad this season at times. I know we've also played other, but this team looked really bad. I mean, even that clip of Haskins on the sidelines literally begging his offensive line to tell him what he can do better to help them, and they just look so disinterested in anything that he has to say. I mean, the, the, the refs are a really bad football team. And, I mean, if you looked in the stadium, there was next to nobody there. So that just shows you how fed up the fans are, you know, with that franchise over there. But, look, this is a bad Redskins team, but we went in and we did what we needed to do and we took care of business. Um, the biggest thing for me, and I'm going to keep pounding this home as, as well, is I want to see Sam go out there and just look competent. I want to see him go out there and put his best foot forward and do the best that he can this year to take the next step. And this game, he did that. He made some big-time throws in this game. And I, and I really I, I love seeing this stuff. That dime that he dropped to Crowder, that's an NFL throw right there. That's an NFL throw. That's big stuff. So he's going in there. He's taking this offense by the reins, um, and he's, you know, doing this thing. The one thing I will say, and I'm worried about this with Sam because people have been banging on him about this since college, which, again, I didn't think was a big deal at SC because I knew he was dealing with offense line issues. He was constantly just trying to make a play, but – Look, if you got guys around your heels and you're going down, please don't don't try to do too much. You know, and I feel like at times Sam during the game tries to do a little bit too much. Instead of just kind of letting the play die and giving up, he'll try to scramble around, he'll try to extend it too much, or he'll try to throw the ball with guys hanging off him, and that often turns into turnovers. Late throws, you know, trying to throw across his body. We've seen that, you know, earlier in the year. He's got to gotta learn at times to let a play die. He doesn't have to always do too much. But I think that's going to come with more time on the field, more growth, more maturity. He'll start to realize that. But, um, you know, he, he had one interception in this game, which was a bad one, but we're moving on from that because he did throw four TDs. My guy's going out there and delivering. So um, Sam looked good, and, and that's what I was excited about as well. Adams looked amazing. I mean, that guy is, whoa, he's playing crazy, you know, out there. So he's doing this thing as well. So I thought that, hey, we took care of business against a really bad team, but I'm keeping things in perspective, and I think other fans should do that the same as well. We are winning five in a row. We are full speed ahead now. Now there's no looking back. <laughs> I've, I've learned my lesson. Everybody has taught me my lesson. All this Come fire on, Adam Gay stuff is clearly nonsense, man. Uh -huh. Look, when he gets Sam rolling, this offense is cooking. The defense is playing well. One of the best defenses well, in football against the run. Jamal Adams is an all pro. Okay. I mean, dude. But mm -hmm. then we know what the funny thing is. The, the funny thing is, you look at this game and he called the play calling was creative. He, he did all the things we had begging for for the last five weeks rolling Sam yeah. out, putting Le'Veon Bell as a slot receiver, bringing in Bilal Powell, doing all these things we've been begging and begging and begging to see. And it's just like, yeah. and now apparently it was, it, it took Sam Darnold to go into his office and say, listen. This is what I like to do. Okay, let's do it. Yeah. But I think a bigger piece of this puzzle, to be completely honest with you, is the return of Kelvin Beecham. And having a serviceable left tackle made a huge difference. Tom Compton played pretty well. But I think Sam not having to worry about his blind side, you know, 95% of the time made a big difference. Things like that I mm -hmm. think helped. Neville Hewitt coming back is a big addition. He's playing very well. The defensive line, minus Leonard Williams, and pretty much minus Quinton Williams, too, is doing next to nothing playing very well, and then you look at the secondary, Bless Austin flying around. like he, You know what, Bless Austin is Kyle Wilson with the swagger, but he actually plays. Mm -hmm. Like He has the swagger. Mm -hmm. he, he, can, he can bring the swagger, the figure pointing, and everything else, but he actually plays well, too. So that's encouraging. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of encouraging things, but then it's like, okay, cool. Like I get the excitement. As a Jets fan, you can wear your hat, you can wear your shirt, you can do all these things. You can tell me how great Sam is. Okay, show it to me against the Raiders. That's it. If, if you play great these last two weeks and then go play a complete dud against a good team, none of this makes any sense. It, it, it has no value yeah. then. You know what I mean, Joe? It's like, exactly. like playing the Redskins was like, was, like, was, like a pra it was like a scrimmage. They're terrible, and they quit. Yeah. Like, they weren't even trying yeah. at certain points. Even they were saying it on TV. The announcers were even saying, like, this Redskins team's not even trying. Okay, so you took advantage yeah. of it. You build up your confidence. You build up your spirit. But it all becomes meaningless if you come out Sunday and run, run, third and ten, uh, incomplete pass, you know, the same old nonsense we've seen when the going got tough. Now they got now they really got to show, show us what they are. Show us on Sunday. Yeah. Show us that you're a well-coached yeah. team that has your, your act together. Exactly. And, you know, I, I, look, I understand people are talking about the, you know, the return of Beecham and everything, but, but that guy's been so bad this season. 
He's been so up and down. He's been so awful at times as well. That's a guy we need to move on from, you know, at the end of this season. But he, he was decent in this game. But I think the bigger part, again, was the fact that the Redskins are so bad. Um, you know, that that team, <laughs> they just, they're, they're a complete dysfunction. Like you said, I, even the, like you said, the announcers were even saying, hey, this team is, this team is just giving up. They just don't care. And the penalties that they were getting to help us extend drives were idiotic. Like, just the, the stuff that they were doing was terrible. But, um, you know, even guys like, like Austin, I need to see Austin do this against, you know, the better teams that we have coming up. Because I know a lot of people are already talking about it. And a fellow receiver. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know, because, look, I remember people were loving Nate Harrison. I remember that. Like, that was yeah. like two weeks yes, ago. Yes, sir. And then he had one bad game, and people were like, this guy's trash. <laughs> Get this guy. I don't ever want to see him again. And then, yeah, Austin, you know, I played decent against two really bad teams. We need to see him against some real NFL competition before we talk about, hey, this guy should come back and possibly be a starter. I, I've seen some people talk about him, you know, being in the fold to be a starter or be our number two next year. It's like, whoa, let's slow down a little bit before we anoint this kid, you know, one of the best corners in the league. Let's see him against some really good football teams because that's who you're going to face. You know, if you really want to get somewhere, we actually have to play some competitive football teams that don't want to come and take our heads off the same way, you know, we want to do them. So, you know, these teams are, that we have coming up, you know, that aren't going to be the Redskins or of their ilk, we're going to have to take care of those guys if we want to rise uh, to the top. So, you know, again, I'm keeping perspective. Um, I, I like the win, but we've, we've got to do this against the Raiders. We've got to do this against, you know, better teams than the Redskins because, uh, the fact that, and also the fact that Sam Darnold had to go to Adam Gaze to tell him, "Hey, listen, this is not working." <laughs> I mean, if that don't tell y'all something, like, uh, look, everyone loves to say that I'm an Adam Gaze basher. I am not. The fact that he had to have somebody come to him, and he's the offensive genius. He's the offensive guru. That's what I was told. That's what I was sold on when he came here. The fact that he had to go into that man's office and say, "Listen." This offense is not working. This is what I like to do. How did you not assess what Sam would like or what Sam was good at or what his strengths were before you put this offense together coming in this year? That's what offensive gurus and geniuses do. They tailor their offensive system and principles to the QB that they have. That's why Lamar Jackson is so, you know, successful right now up there with the Ravens. Do you think they have him dropping back like throwing bombs all day. No, they, they tailor the game to him and what he does. They give him freedom to run. They give him freedom to kind of roll out. They give him, you know, little routes here and there. He can throw the football down the field, as we've clearly seen this year, but they don't put him in positions to, you know, to have to deal with stuff or have to do things that he doesn't do well. That's why he's lighting the NFL up right now. That's why he's running past guys. And, he's, and I'm telling you, he looks very Vic-like. <laughs> uh, this kid is running, and he's making people run into each other. It is crazy some of the stuff I'm seeing him do. And he's just ultra-athletic, and he's just as special as I thought that he would be you know, during that draft. But if you're an offensive guru, then you do those things. That's the same thing that uh, McVay does in, in, in L.A. He, t- he literally – created a scheme that would have Goth in a better position than he was when he was dealing with Jeff Fisher. That was one of the saving graces there. So uh, uh, I'm hoping that Gates gets it together and that, you know, they can continue this success going forward or Sam can continue the success because it looks like really Sam is the offensive coordinator now. He's the QB coach, and he's out there doing his thing, and Gates is kind of just standing around. But, you know, hopefully we can do this against better teams and really – you know, help Sam take that next step forward. Yeah, I mean, there's there's two types of deodorant in the NFL. The first one is winning, which we've just seen the last two weeks, and the other one is solid quarterback play, which we've also seen the last two weeks. So now all the yeah. all the Adam Gase critics are all silent, and now there's all these people saying, "I told you so." Like, I'm not really sure. What, like, mm-hmm. I love people that are saying, "I told you so." You your takes on Adam Gase, you don't know what you're talking about. You're a stupid fan. Okay, I'll play this game with you. I'm a stupid fan. History tells me I'm not because we beat two very bad teams. You want to prove yeah. me wrong, beat, beat the Raiders, be very competitive against the Ravens, beat the Steelers, beat the Bills. This isn't asking a lot. I mean, the Ravens is. The other ones aren't. Yeah. The Raiders are, I mean, the Raiders are you're at home. They, try, they, they always play like they, they don't play well. One o'clock games on the East Coast. You're coming off two wins. The fans are going to be inspired. Show us something. Show us that you can scheme more than 15 plays against a very good team, yeah. when you start facing adversity and the team's not quitting against you. 
I mean, it, it, yeah. listen, I'm excited, man. I, I think it, it's encouraging. It's fun to watch competitive football and functional football, but I also know what we just beat. We beat two mm-hmm. horrendous teams. Like being, like, being the Bengals is not really an accomplishment. You beat the Raiders, you're showing me something. The Steelers are going to be very competitive, yeah. especially physical defenses, Joe, the ones that are going to smack Donald around, the ones that are going to take advantage That's of the, exactly. the offensive line mistakes, things like that. But I will, do, yeah. I will say this. The defense under Greg Williams has been phenomenal. And, they, and it's like that Absolutely. defensive line and, and the way Greg Williams is using, he used Jamal Adams as an outside linebacker, an edge rusher, a safety. Yeah. I mean, Greg Williams is dialing things up. But, again, you did it against two bad teams. Now let's see it yeah. against a well-coached Raiders team. Like, this is your test. And before everybody starts patting themselves on the back and telling me how great everything is, yes, you won two in a row. Unfortunately, you blew a game against the Dolphins and you blew a game against the Bills. If you win these, those two games, this is a whole new season. This whole season is completely yeah. different. But we lost yeah. those games. Yeah. And the other thing that's starting to bother me, too, is all the built the the injury excuse, like I said earlier, when they win, it's a team is good. When they lose, it's injuries. That's just the way it is. But you know, all the built-in excuses, well, it's all the new system, it's all this, it's all that. The mistakes they were making wasn't system. It was being poorly coached. It was a lack of discipline. Exactly. It was like, like, you know what I mean? Like, it's not, like, there was gross mistakes, like horrendous mistakes they were making that wasn't yeah. a new system. It was just poorly coached. So, yeah, yeah. we'll see what happens. Well, but, yeah. I mean, it's... The, he was making the last three days, dude. It's been wild, man. It's like, whoa, like, what happened? Like, the yeah. bipolar fan base is back. And, and, and you know what's crazy is that we actually predicted that on this show. We talked about, hey, if we win these next two games, people are going to be screaming and raving about gays and talking about how everyone else was wrong because you just beat two bad teams. We talked about that before the Giants game. You know how people are going to all, all of a sudden start going off. For all the, everyone that is sitting back saying, well, all the excuses, it's a, it's a new system and all that, Listen, if you want to prove, I, I can literally tell you to go back to certain games, and I can prove that it's coaching that lost us those games. Go back and watch that Patriots game where they came out and they ran the same zero blitz over and over and over and over again, and there was no adjustment to it whatsoever. That game alone should have, should have put a light bulb over your head. Boom, that went off and went, boom, something's wrong here. It's not the scheme. It's the coaching. Because Gaze could not figure out how to stop that at all. There's other games where you've done. Hell, he couldn't figure out how to stop the Dolphins when they were bringing heat and pressure. And that is a horrible Dolphins team. That team's not, the team's not good at all. That is a terrible football team. Couldn't figure out. Couldn't dial it up against those teams. What about when we played the Bills and we couldn't score? And there was a lack of adjustment in that one. Like, so all these excuses and injuries and stuff, you know, what's crazy is, like you said as well, Greg Williams is, deal- is the guy dealing with injuries, and he's adjusted way better than Adam Gaze has yep. for his offense. At, Greg Williams was going out there with Austin and, and uh, McClellan and all Mullet. these guys. that These aren't his starting corners. The, he's out there playing with literally. He, there was one point he didn't even have any damn linebackers, no middle linebackers. And he was still going out there being able to dial up a scheme and put on pressure and figure out how to put guys in the best positions to be successful, and we were still winning games with that. The defense this year has been much better than the offense. We talked about that all throughout the season. And Greg Williams has been the guy dealing with big injuries as well. He dealt with C.J. Mosey not playing. Avery Williamson is not playing. There was times in his corner. I mean, hell, even when our, our, our corner, Tremaine Johnson, even when he was hurt, they were still doing anything. Even when he played like trash, he was still able to put some stuff together and put him on the bench and still be successful at certain spots. So I, I don't want to hear any excuse about injuries because injuries are that, – that's an NFL. That's part of the NFL. We've played teams that have had big injuries too, but we don't acu- you know, acute that to our wins. Oh, well, they were missing that guy. That's why – no, nobody says that. So no one cares if you have injuries. You lace it up and you go out there. So all the excuses, all the nonsense, just put that away. Keep perspective. Keep perspective about who we beat, the timing of how we beat them. Let's, let's see this against better football teams. Let's see us do this against the Raiders and all the other teams that we have coming up. Can we be competitive? Can we beat teams that are on the cusp? Can we do that? Can we look well coached against the Raiders team? We're going to see. Yeah, and can you handle success? You've won two in a row, and now you're feeling yourself. Now everybody's like, oh, the yeah. Jets are going to win five in a row. Now we're back in a playoff hunt. Yeah. Now we're this. Now we're that. Okay, show us. Like, show us. You want to you win six in a row? Go right for it. Knock yourselves out. Go for it. Prove it. Like, pro- like I'm in, like, show-me mode now. And right now, Adam Gase with the Sam Darnold is three and three. 
Fine. You like you, every like I like so much Kool Aid is being drank now that I've I've heard everything known to man about how great the Jets are and how many positive things. All wonderful. Show me on Sunday. Home game against yeah. a West Coast team that plays terrible or they don't play as well at one o'clock. A team that has a very very good uh, offensive line, a defensive line. Show us. Oh, show, man. show me yeah. what you have, Adam Gase. Show me what you have, and, and no excuses because like the thing is like. The last two weeks, to me now, it's like all your excuses should be going away. Because if you can win two games, then when you lose, it can't be, oh, man, we have too many injuries. Wait a minute. You just won two games. The injuries weren't a problem now, but now this week they are again. Like, it's so inconsistent. Yeah. It's crazy. It's really crazy. But there's a, lot of, there's a lot of positives, like I said, you know, bless Austin. But you want to see bless Austin go against very good receivers. You know, I think the yeah. one thing we could say is that, at, you know, Jamal Adams is approaching a Revis-like year where he's having an all-pro year, like a unanimous first-team all-pro, give him, you know, $15 million a year kind of year, man. Like, he, he is just – he's taking his game to a ridiculously high level, and Greg Williams is really helping him. I mean, it's just – he's the kind of, like – I don't think that Todd Bowles would have used Jamal Adams like he's used – like Greg Williams is using him, and he's just flourishing, yeah. man. Like, you know, it's like – you you it's exciting, and then you see guys like Nathan Shepard, like – they don't miss Leonard Williams at all. They don't miss Quinton Williams at all. I mean, they have guys in the middle where it's like McClendon, you have Basham, yeah. you have uh, Foley, Kyle Phillips. I mean, they're just getting after it. Jordan Jenkins is playing well. There's a lot of guys playing well, like you said, because they basically had no middle linebackers. I mean, Neville Hewitt came back, and they have no starting corners because Roberts was out, yeah. Johnson sucks, Nate Harrison was out. You have Austin, Mollett, and then you have Poole there. So, dude, it's, it's impressive, but now I want to see more. Like, it's you know now it's your crunch time. Show you know ten games in, all your other nonsense is done. Beat the Raiders. Beat the Raiders and go on yeah. a true four or five game winning streak. You beat the Raiders, you can win yeah. four games after that, and then then it gets interesting. Yeah, yeah. You know, look, and the way that Greg Williams is using Adams, it's it's crazy. He's letting this dude just absolutely go out there and hunt. I mean, he's bringing him to the line, and he's just saying go. You know, allowing him to bring pressure. I was, you know, I laughed. I, I, you know, did a video on our on our, on our YouTube page. I laughed. You know, he might be our best pass rusher. <laughs> like, he might just be. You know, this guy is absolutely getting around running backs that are, you know, supposed to be brought in to help Chip. I mean, he's beating those guys, and he's getting right to it. He's getting to the quarterback, and he's providing pressure. So that that's helping out because, again, we just talked about how banged up, you know, that cornerback position is. If your quarterback has to make a decision under duress, that's really going to help these corners, especially in their coverage. You're not going to have to cover too long if Jamal keeps coming off the edge against these teams and doing those things. So he's he's playing extremely well. Um, you know, and Hewitt had a, had a solid game, too. Had himself an interception. He's going out there doing his thing. And this line is still able – you know, survive and do their thing. Shepard, Farukasi, those guys have really stepped up. Phillips, those guys have stepped up. Basham, uh, doing their thing. They're not missing Leonard Williams. Quentin Williams, I want to see more out of him. I understand that Greg Williams loves to rotate his guys in and out. Something, but, I mean, come on. We, we got to see something out this kid because, my goodness, if he's uh, – and, and I hate to say this. And I don't want yeah, I'm not okay. calling him a bust, but I'm saying if, that if he does bust, Okay. Okay. That's that's your business. <laughs> I'm not ready to give up on him yet. You know, uh, he, he's still Why is here. But else let's say he, plays, but not him. Listen, I'm not. Look, <laughs> if he does go into bus mode and this guy turns into, you know, uh, let's say another Leonard Williams, where he just never, you know, doesn't do anything, doesn't produce, and we're going to year two or three out of him. He, I mean, look at that draft. Look at McCagnan's final draft. That's already bad. Where your first round pick is bad, then you, you know, the other guy you brought in is supposed to be a pass rusher. He was already gone too. It's just, dude. It, it, I I want to see him, you know, be put in a position to make plays a little bit more. Maybe I don't know if he's just being rotated out, or maybe he's just not beating those guys out. He's just not good enough. I don't know what it is, but I'd love to see him out there doing something. So he's got to step it up. We've got to see more out of this dude. Because, again, before the draft, when I was screaming, hey, let's trade down or let's draft, let's draft Josh Allen, we need a pass rusher, people were screaming that he was the pass rusher and that he was going to bring us interior pressure and that he was the best, you know, player in the draft. And that he, if you don't like Quentin Williams and you don't think he can get to the quarterback, then you're an idiot. I remember all of those people calling in and saying that consistently for weeks. So – and I remember people also saying that the reason we should draft him is because he would bring immediate impact. I remember those those immediate impact were the words. So I need to see that out of him, man. We need that up front. 
Yeah, so the only, the only thing I'm going to say with Quentin Williams is this is a disappointing year for him. That, I'm just going to write up as a disappointing year. And maybe an NFL offseason with true strength and conditioning, put on weight, put on more muscle, and see what happens. Another player we haven't mentioned at all and has been a blessing for this team is Ryan Griffin. Tight end, man, is, oh, yeah. he is just a, he is the safety valve for Sam Darnold. He's a, he's a touchdown machine at this point. But, dude, he's almost making you forget Chris Herndon. And, listen, I know he's not the same athlete, not as explosive. But, dude, he's, he finds holes in the defense. He gets open, he catches the ball, and he scores. What else can you ask from a tight end? I mean, that's it. He's a perfect safety valve right now for Sam Darnold. Yeah. Yeah, he absolutely is. And I think, you know, whenever Herndon comes back, you know, I don't know when he's coming back, but it's going to be really hard for him to get on the field the way that Griffin is playing. This guy, like you said, has been a really great safety valve for Sam. Um, You know, he he allows Sam to kind of get rid of the ball, get it to him, and he's able to make plays as well after the catch. So we'll see what happens going forward with him, but he's a guy that's really shown up this year. Yeah, so there's a lot of those guys, and, you know, if you follow our Twitter account, I tweeted out, there's a bunch of these guys that we mentioned just now that are all free agents, whether it's Neville Hewitt, Ryan Griffin, you got Jordan mm-hmm. Jenkins. There's a long list of guys that even Brian Poole, I mean, there's a lot of guys that are on you know, one-year contracts are, that are fighting for jobs. So I wouldn't be surprised, yeah. to be honest with you, if as this season plays out, and we obviously realize that Gaze is coming back, that they, re- they start re-signing some of these guys because it, makes, it only makes yeah. sense. Like, you have, you know, like, yeah. I think it's safe to say that Avery Williams is probably going to be gone. Neville Hewitt has been just as good, man. He, he's, he probably won't cost nowhere near as much. You bring him back. Griffin's, an, you know, insurance policy. You know, like, it seems like these guys that you can find now that are, that are succeeding in this, you know, garbage time of the year, dude, take yeah. advantage of it and, and maybe get you know, reasonable deals. Yeah, and, you know, I, I'm not – I know other people have kind of like played with the idea of letting Avery Williams go as well. I'm not – necessarily sold on that idea just yet i would hope that you know we would see where he's at and if he is and you know we would keep him around but yeah some of these guys that we have here especially guys like jordan jenkins i just look at the situation with a team that has so many holes going into the offseason if you find guys that are performing well and are, that fit the scheme they're going out there and doing their thing you want to keep and secure these guys here if it's for the right price you want to keep and secure these guys here because you don't want to create more holes by allowing those guys to walk away. So, uh, you know, we'll see how they handle business. I would hope that they would be able to sign some of these guys going, like you said, going towards the end of the year, see if they can get these guys re-signed on a deal, you know, a solid deal before maybe some of these guys test free agency because we both know uh, you, you go and you test free agency. Sometimes the guys that get snatched up, you know, for just a little bit more. We've seen that in the past, you know, with tight ends, all kinds of guys that, we would hope that we're staying around and they got snatched up by other teams, you know, for just a little bit more money than what we offered. So I'm hoping that we can get those deals done because, again, if we can sure up holes now and then go into the offseason and really continue to assess this football team, it's a lot better for us than have a ton of holes because other guys walked away and we just couldn't keep them. Yeah, and one player I didn't mention, and I was kind of tough on him when he first came to the Jets, is Demarius Thomas. And Listen, Demarius yeah. Thomas, he gets you three or four catches a week, and, and dude, they're always in a big spot. It's like helps move the chains or helps get Sam out of trouble, mm-hmm. whatever it is, and he's been a nice complimentary piece. And like you said, Joe, it's like, you know, what Joe Douglas needs to do is identify, listen, you know, they're going to have $50 million in cap space next year, probably close to 70 once they start, you know, weeding out some of the high price contracts. But you, you yeah. find somebody's corp, you can't have 22 all-stars. So you need a lot of complimentary pieces and a lot of ro- role players and a lot of these role players right yeah. now are playing a lot of snaps and doing well. So it's like, hey, you know, like, yep. like they gave McClendon a one-year extension. You're like, all right, that's kind of weird. But then he got rid of Leonard, and you see what Quinton's doing. If you see these yeah. other guys doing this, like a Griffin or even an Arthur Molette who's playing corner at a pretty good level, hey, you know what? Go yeah. for them deals now. Start locking some of these guys up a little bit. You know, just kind of be proactive. Yeah, and, and not just that as well. Like you said, some of these guys – you know, that can, that can kind of feel cogs who can't have all-stars. Also, some of these guys are going to be solid additions as far as depth as well. Like, you, you just talked about it, guys like Millette. I don't think Millette's a starting corner, yeah. but, hey, guess what? This guy's playing pretty well right now in this game. Austin as well, they're playing pretty well. Hey, we can keep these guys around. They could be, maybe be slot corners, maybe be our fourth corners, but we can get, you know, two really solid guys on the outside, get a number one, number two. Maybe these guys can be some complementary pieces in the secondary. So, those, hell, even some of these guys on the offensive line that's playing right now, some of these guys aren't starters either. 
Um, and yep. we may pursue, you know, better offensive line talent coming this offseason as well. But these guys are showing, hey, we could be solid depth pieces because they perform decently as starters. So, uh, you know, again, signing some of these guys to deals before you get to free agency so you don't have to maybe overspend to keep them is a smart idea. But we'll see how Joe Douglas plays it because there's going to be a lot of moves made. There's still some possible trades that could go on as well. Um, so we'll see what happens. Yeah, so before we go to very busy phone lines, we're going to change the theme a little bit here and talk about something much more important than the New York Jets, and that's the Community Food Bank of New Jersey. As everybody knows, this time of year, especially the holidays, you know, everybody wants to have nice meals with their family, and they want to do a lot of cool things, but unfortunately there's a lot that are just less fortunate, where they, you know, they're working a couple jobs, they still can't you know, afford to feed their family, or there's challenges having things that we have. So what we're going to do is we're going to bring on, hold on, i got too many buttons here, Joe, I'm sorry. We're going to bring on David Goldstein. <laughs> David, this is Joe and Tyson. How are you doing? Hey, Joe and Tyson. How are you tonight? Oh, we're doing pretty good. You know, the Jets have won a couple games, so we're all in a pretty good mood. But uh, we want to thank you for joining us. We really appreciate it. I appreciate the time. Oh, absolutely. So I guess when we first get started, can you just break down, you know, what the Community Food Bank of New Jersey offers and what you do for them? Sure. I'm the vice president of operations, and as the vice president of operations, I'm responsible for the day-to-day logistics and supply chain uh, for the organization, which includes food sourcing, food procurement, and food distribution. Now, last year, the food bank distributed over 60 million pounds of food, which is equal to more than 60, uh, 50 million meals. A quarter or 25% of all the food we distributed was fresh fruits and vegetables, and about 60% Sixty-seven percent of that food we distribute comes from highly nutritious foods to encourage categories. Mr. Goldstein, I want to welcome you to the show, and and you've already bringing in some great knowledge, some great stats, and you talked about how you de- deliver those fresh fruits and vegetables. But where exactly does the food bank get most of its food from? You know, that's a great question. I get asked that question all the time. We wouldn't be able to do what we do. To- end hunger in New Jersey without the support from our donors, volunteers, and hunger-fighting advocates. 58% of the food we, we distribute comes from donations through food drives from corporations, local community organizations, from our retail grocery partners, and from individuals who just walk up and give a can or a box or a bag of food. About 25% of the food we distribute comes from different government commodities, and we also purchase about 75% of our food using funds that we raise to help build out that healthy, nutritious menu that's we supply to those in need. And are there programs that you offer to deliver food to those in need? We sure are. The food is distributed. We partner with more than 1,000 community organizations and partners, which are made up of soup kitchens, food pantries, feeding programs, including our Kids Cafe program, our Family Pack program, summer food and senior boxes. You know, the food bank treats health as a hunger issue, and we have initiatives that include a healthy family farmer's markets, snack ed nutrition education programs, and a diabetes, diabetes initiative. What are some of the challenges you face when spreading the word about hunger? You know, we, we love to be able to partner with others. And the way that people can help us advocate and spread awareness of hunger and our mission is to help us by liking us and following us on all the different social media outlets, by advocating and spreading the word on those outlets, by hosting a food and fun drive, whether it be traditional or virtual, or volunteer. You know, when you come into our facilities, whether it be in our hillside location or our Egg Harbor Township location, you get to see what we do on a daily basis. And when you get to see what we do, you can really understand that hunger is a, is a year-round, 365-day problem that exists in every community and every county, even the most affluent. Yeah, once again, we're speaking with David Goldstein, who's very kind to join us tonight, about the Community Food Bank in New Jersey. And, you know, the one thing is, you know, I live in Brick, New Jersey, so I see you guys have a lot of displays in, like, the shop rights and all the food, things like that. Do you have events year-round and and events coming up that people can get involved in? We do. Yeah, the food bank is the leading 
is New Jersey's leading anti-hunger organization, and we've been delivering food, hope, and help for over 45 years. We have our 19th annual turkey drive taking place this Saturday, November 23rd, and Sunday, November 24th, in nearly 50 sites throughout New Jersey. People can drop off one, uh, at one of these sites to drop off holiday food donations. Some of our most health-needed items include frozen turkeys, of course, hams, gravy, cranberry sauce, stuffing, canned vegetables and fruits, and soups. It can go right to our, our website at cfbnj.org slash turkey to find food drive sites near them, and they can also learn how to give online. Last year, the food bank provided over 25,000 turkeys for our neighbors in need throughout New Jersey. Now, I know, Mr. Ghostin, you just talked about how people can donate turkeys, but can they also donate money or volunteer as well? How would they get involved with the food bank in that facet? Uh, we'd love when people come and volunteer. Our, your listeners can go right to our website at CFBNJ and sign up by either volunteering at one of our locations or by donating funds. You know, last year, close to, we had close to 42,000 visits from volunteers who volunteered more than 102,000 hours of their time. That's equal to more than 52 full-time employees. I want to make sure that you understand that hunger is real in the state of New Jersey. There are close to 900,000 food insecure New Jerseyans, and more than 260,000 of them are children, one in seven, actually. Now, a dollar can help provide three meals, and don't forget, 92% of every dollar we raise goes directly into the fight against hunger in New Jersey. Wow, those are some phenomenal numbers, man. That's just crazy. That's why we're doing our best to help you guys out and spread the word uh, the best we can. One more time, can you give out all the information in terms of websites and best ways to help uh, contribute? Absolutely. So go right to our website at cfbnj.org. Again, that's cfbnj.org. There you can learn ways to donate online, sign up to volunteer, run food drives, whether it's traditional or virtual, and make a tour of one of our facilities to find out more about what we do. CFBNJ.org. David, once again, thank you very much for joining us tonight, and thank you very much for everything you're doing with the, with the food bank, man. We, it's, it's amazing. It's so important, so we really appreciate it. Thank you, John. Thanks so much for your time. We appreciate you giving us the opportunity. Absolutely. Have a great night. You too. You know, Joe, those are some crazy numbers, man. When you think about it, 260,000 children, man. It's not, it's like, yep. that's just wild, dude. So you think about, you yeah. know, 92% of the money that's raised goes to the help with these meals. I mean, you'd be crazy not to do it. And like I said, you know, if you live in New Jersey, like I do, I mean, you go to the shop rights, you go to all the grocery stores, and you see the things where you can either throw in money or you can throw in food. And it's a lot of times when you check out. So they say, hey, do you want to contribute? Okay, you can say, hey, five bucks. That five bucks goes to meals. Exactly. You buy a couple meals with that. So super, yeah. super important, especially this time of year when the weather gets cold and it's just a lot of things change. So, and the holidays, too. Like, we're very fortunate to spend time with our families and have these nice meals and stuff like that. To be able to give somebody else the same opportunity is pretty important. Exactly, and, and that's what it's all about. And I want to thank uh, Mr. Goldstein for coming on and just spreading, the, uh, helping us spread the message, and giving all of the the information and knowledge that uh, that he spread here on the show. Listen, everyone, there's a lot of people out there. He gave the stats about how many hundreds of thousands of kids that are going without. Uh, get involved any way that you can. Go to cfbnj dot org. Donate your money if you can. Donate your time. There's a lot of people out there looking for their next meal. Help them find it. You know, it's, it's cold outside. The holidays is, is, you know, here. Help anyone out that you can. Yeah, well said. So now we're going to transition back to one of the hottest teams in football, the New York Jets, who have won two games in a row, and they're coached by Adam Gase, the new, the new man of the Jets people, the, the new innovator, the guy that's that's working with Sam Darnold to make everybody great again. This is just a great time to be alive. And, Joe, yeah. even more breaking news. This Sunday, mm-hmm. not only am I going to the game, I'm sitting next to primetime. So can you imagine <laughs> what we're going to be talking about this game? He's going to have his hands full, dude, because it's just yeah. – I can't wait for this. This is going to be a good time, man. This poor guy, he's probably going to regret this. <laughs> man, look, look, 
what's done is done. I guess you're going to be sitting next to him. It's all sorted out. So, you know, he, it, it is what it is. I, you know, I want to see if y'all do a video together. You know, that's, that's going to oh, be interesting because you you've already, you've already negatively influenced him so far. So we'll see if you're going oh, yeah. to take him completely off the edge. You know what I mean? So we'll see what happens. But it's good that you two are going to the game together and join each other, enjoying each other's times out there at the, at the, uh, at the stadium and having a good one. Again, so YouTube channel where we have no filters. Let's Talk Jets Radio. We're on Instagram and Twitter, at Talk Jets Radio, Apple Podcasts. Uh, we're on Facebook. We're everywhere. Most importantly, we're on Spreaker.com. So su- subscribe wherever we're at. We appreciate it. And as you can tell, if you leave us feedback and we don't like it, I know I come right back at you, and I have no problem with full force just antagonizing oh, people. So I don't care. Yeah, I, I had one guy. Dude. <sighs> the dude was from, like, the yeah, Midwest somewhere. Not even a Jets fan. And he was like, you don't know football, you're no fan, and you got to be patient. I'm like, dude, I've been patient for 30 years. You better pipe down and slow Man. your roll. I just went at him. I'm like, <laughs> I'm like thank you, like, like, Joe can't see this. <laughs> oh, I believe me, I see it. People, listen, for, you know, all you folks, we want to thank you for going over to Let's Talk Jets Radio, YouTube page, watching our videos, and all the feedback that you give. You know, don't stop giving feedback. We love, you know, reading your comments. I know some of us love to take people's heads off, but that's not what we're all about over here. We are all about, you know, showing love, receiving love, and, you know, going back and forth with, with all of the not listeners prime, and all the people I'm that watch watching. angry as hell. Yeah. Well, you know, it is what it is. So definitely, you know, go over to your YouTube page. But, again, everyone listening, we want to thank you folks for listening. We want to hear from you people, though. Please call in. Our number is 929 477 Two six five one. Call in and talk to us about this team that is, you know, moving forward with Sam Darnold. All right, to the calls we go. Plenty of people on hold. We're going to go to Shaq. Shaq, are you ready to win five games in a row? Yes. Yes. See? Another one. <laughs> I got a sad face on. I got a sad face on right now. Yes. <laughs> I see. I see. I see Tyson. I see that. You you somewhat got the green glasses on because you're going to the game Sunday, and and then you're going with prime time. I remember the last time we heard prime mm-hmm. time get mad at the game live. <laughs> it was at that Mets game. He was like, <laughs> he said, "Is Todd Bowles coaching my team?" Like, <laughs> I was in tears. I laughed so hard that day. So I can just imagine yeah. him this Sunday when he see Derek Carr. Tear us apart, and we just all go oh. down to reality. We're not going to have this. We all just going to go right back down. Number one yeah. ranked front defense. Number yeah, one ranked front on. defense. We got an all pro safety. Yeah. We got the we got yeah, the, the, the NFL by the balls right now. We're rolling. <laughs> well, listen, let, let's just let's just slow down because we'll talk about that. You know, upcoming on Friday when we do our show there for that preview. I want I want to celebrate this win a little bit, Zach, and I want to go yeah, straight sure. to the guy that's at the helm, man. I want to talk to you about Sam Darnold. What are your thoughts about his performance in this game? I love it, man. I I, I never gave up on Sam. Uh, I felt like Sam didn't have, you know, he obviously don't have the O line, the coaching. You know, I'm glad he went and talked to Adam Gage because he because Adam Gage needed needed to be talked to because when you don't give the ball to the second best, third best running back in the game on a goal line and you make you, you, you make Sam Donald pass, a young 22-year-old pass the ball when you got an elite running back in the backfield, then you know you got to talk to him. But, you know, uh, I, he, he did well. He was, re- he was reading everything, even though Washington is terrible. But still, he, he's done, you know, he's doing good. And I feel like we, we are improving. We are getting better. So do you think they're getting better, or this is a product of the two bad teams they played? Um... Well, we did lose to Miami, so um, I think it's just I think I feel like we're getting a little bit better. Uh, I know it's, it's I know it's one guy that I got the the green glasses on. I had to let this out. The guy I got the green glasses on, bless Austin. I like that guy. He ain't no number one. He's not the next Deion Sanders. He's not the next Deion Sanders. I'm not saying it, but I think he could be a decent guy for us rebuilding. Because, you know, right now we're thin at corner, we're thin at pass rush, and we're thin at O-line. So we got to get what we can from this season 
so that way it could somewhat help us and we could build around or, you know, build on top of that, you know, because he could play the number two. We obviously don't have to get another corner. So that saves us a draft, draft pick and that saves us some money in free agency. That's how I feel about it. In, ter- in, in terms of free agency, a guy that a lot of people want to run out of town but seems like since he's came back the line to play better is Kelvin Beecham who, I mean, the line has been night and day better just with him back there because the, the left tackle position is so important. Would you consider trying to bring him back next year on a reasonable deal to be like the veteran mentor in case you can't get, say if you try to draft a left tackle or you can't get one free mm-hmm. and see, at least you have something mm-hmm. there instead of trying to worry about yeah. the yoga or somebody else? Yeah, that, that goes back to, you know, what I was saying, like, you know, within, within at the old line position. And we've been at a lot of positions. So we... Whatever we can build on, on top of, you know, get something decent. I know Joe hates Kelvin Beecham. He hates his guts. But you got to remember, he did get destroyed by Miles Garrett. <laughs> Miles Garrett is a beast, okay? This guy is doing backflips with 500-pound dumbbells on his neck. This guy is a beast, okay? He knocked the guy out with a helmet. So, we, we, you know, this, this, that's different. That's what, that's what Joe is thinking about. Well, Miles Garrett running no. through. But I well, think he, he was, could, could, could. Dang, he's, could, he's calling he's you out, Joe. On top of him. Yeah. No, no, you know, yeah. Joe, it's all love, Joe. Remember that. It's all no, love. No, no, exactly. right after. <laughs> no, yeah, I, I got, listen, I got nothing but love for Shaq, and I hear you, but he was getting beat I, before I, that. I, I uh, you go back, you, you go back and watch that, that, you know, that <laughs> game. Quit, quit trying to just start the Tyson. <laughs> you go at everybody, Tyson. You go at people in YouTube comments. You trying to get me to go at people? No, that's not how I do things. You know what I'm saying? Especially when he comes he to came after me you. respectfully. We're going. No, you didn't go after. You threw the first chance for off. I didn't say a word. This is Shaq came after you. Listen, <laughs> listen. Kel- Kelvin Beecham has been bad. That's not the first guy he's gotten beat by. I would like to move on from him, but if for whatever reason, which. If Joe Douglas whiffs on a left tackle all throughout this offseason, there's something wrong with him, bro. <laughs> there's something wrong with him because left tackle should be the number one thing that we should go after this offseason. And we'll, we'll, we'll talk about that. But that, that should be number one on the list. Offensive line no. should be number one, two, three, four, and five on the list. There, there's no question about that. Hey, we don't have a lot okay, of but, draft picks and a lot of money out there, man, to be doing all the one, listen, two, three, four, five, there, man. But, but let, we let, let me tell you something. Too. There, there is a uh, receipt. Look, I, I understand we have to receive. That's on the list of needs, but that is below <laughs> offensive line. I don't think there's. Any, mm-hmm. There should be no question. There should be no question. Anyone question that? I, I question you. But if there's anybody <laughs> that is saying that offensive line is at number one, I don't know what is going on in your yeah, brain because it is number one. Number one. Oh, okay, so left tackle that's is number, number one. one. Of you whiff on, you whiff on a bunch of left tackles, then then Joe Douglas. I don't know what to say about him, but I, I want to get now, back to this. T- Go go ahead. What what I want to get on you about is this guy that you said was better than Jamal Adams. Oh yeah, yeah, I don't yeah, yeah. like Marcus. him. I don't <laughs> like him. Listen, you listen, don't listen, what? Listen. Marcus May is Marcus May is not trash. Don't say overhyped. It. Did you just say he's overhyped? Not overhyped? <laughs> overhyped. Oh my God. overhyped. Listen, overhyped. Listen. Listen, first off, first of all, he's not Ed Reed. You know, he's not nobody said he was. Nobody said he was any of those guys. Look, at, at the end of the day, Jamal Adams is playing phenomenally. Okay, yeah, I love great. Jamal Adams. That's I think great, he's great. Right he's, play, he's, play, he's phenomenal. But what Marcus May is being asked to do is play 40 yards off the line and not oh, even really God. be involved to keep guys from blowing past our corners. If you're not watching games and you don't see that, and I don't he, know what to tell you. He out there we making have, tackles. I, I, he got caught Listen, on. We have we have one of What's the best safety him? tandems in all of the NFL. That's what we have, and I'm excited about it. But again, what Marcus May is actually doing this scheme, just, he he Shaq can't really be involved in a lot of plays. Okay, I'm I saying Shaq is he's just here. Folks. He's here. So we he's got here. We got to deal with. You had a bad day at work, man. You had a bad day at work. We got to deal with. What happened, man? Man, this yeah, yeah, man. He's go- yeah, man. Jets have won three in a row, and you're angry as hell. What happened? <laughs> Thank you. You, you kind of made me happy a little bit. I'm, 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 I'm in a better mood now. I'm in a better mood now. Yeah, you know what, though? Listen, got I got to tell you, I, I got to warn you, though, Shaq. If, if, you, if you go after Joe, he's going to get his boy Steve after you. So you got to be careful, man. Oh, come Steve on, man. Oh, man. I don't, I don't do that. <laughs> I don't do none of that. 
Steve, so why you always picking on Steve? You always picking on Steve, man. Always, man. Always. Great guy, man. Always, Great guy. Always trying Great to knowledge. instigate. He Thank knows you. what's going on. Exactly. Exactly. That, 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 that's, Steve, Tyson's, Steve. that's Tyson's problem with Steve, that Steve always schools Tyson, puts him in his place, and yeah. he gets upset. Schools. And he wants, to, he wants to take on Steve like when school Steve's not fish. on. It's crazy. He absolutely he he takes Tyson to task every single time. Yeah, he takes and you know task. absolutely destroys him. Mm-hmm. He brings fire right. every show, and he destroys Tyson. Tyson can't deal with it. It is what it is. I, I don't know about he destroys, destroys but he, he does a good job. Yeah, he destroys he like Hunter own. Williams destroys. You know what I mean? Oh, oh man, <laughs> that's great. Man. Come on, man. Jack, oh, man. That's a lot Jack, of fun. Good night, man. Yes, sir. <laughs> have a good night, man. <laughs> Poor Shaq, I thought he'd be all excited and he was all like melancholy and stuff. Like the Jets have won two in a row, man. We're gonna win five in a row. I don't know why he's not excited, dude. I'm ready for this. We are making a well, run. You know, <laughs> you know, you you you're really I can we, people see through what you're doing. You know what I'm saying? You really try what to about. do whatever you can. Yeah, what am I talking about? about. <laughs> of course you don't. Everybody listen. told me the game is past John Gruden by. Listen, Joe, listen. The game oh. is past John Gruden by, and Adam Gase is always one step ahead. This has got the making okay. of a Jets victory, right? Isn't that okay. what they told okay. me? Listen, listen. I want to thank Shaq for calling in. It's always great to talk to him. I can't wait to hear from him, you know, on, on the next show that we do. I, I'm, I'm, you know, I'm not going too far on that. I'm just excited about this victory and what I we've done. I'm excited about this team. Perspective. I am keeping perspective, and I want other fans to do that as well. I'll bring it on more perspective right here. Tyrone's going to tell us. Tyrone, five in a row, right? <laughs> <laughs> no. Man, that's well, crazy. <laughs> come on, man. I mean, you, know what, nah, you know what's so crazy, man, is I, I'm always happy with a Jets victory. But I, I'm not drinking the Kool-Aid, man. You know, we beat two bad teams. and um, But the way the defense is playing right now, I mean, and I'm not saying all the defense. The defensive line is really playing really good, but we're getting killed with backs out the backfield. You can't really cover yeah. tight ends. And, you know, yeah. I, I like Bless, Bless Austin, man, but, I mean, we haven't played any good receivers. Like, you know, it, mm-hmm. Sunday is going to be a real test. And, and people don't understand that, man. Like, their, their front line, their offensive line and defensive line are really good. And I think that Ooh. Washington just, you know, they're just a bad football team. And, you know, we beat them, what we, which we were supposed to do. Um, I'm excited about the way Sam is playing, but the one thing I think nobody says, no one is really talking about is our offense line has really been playing well the last two games. And mm-hmm. I'm going to be honest with you, I think because Winner's gone and <laughs> KO is gone, it, you know, these young guys are listening. They, they, really, they really play mm-hmm. well. But the, the, the one thing that, that I don't understand, Gates and these offensive genius, why are you not putting Le'Veon in routes? Le'Veon mm-hmm. is amazing running routes. He's probably our best receiver, you know, and to not have him more into the offense is crazy. And I think trying to do too – I think Gage does too much. Keep it simple, man. Let Sam do what's what's good for him and and go with that route and watching Bilal Powell get those big chunks, watching our tight ends play well, you know. I mean, yeah, you're definitely excited, but watching our defense, you know, it's really bad with linebackers being able to cover out the backfield. But, you know, guys have been aggressive, man, and I like that, man. You know, the ball is – absolutely playing retarded right now, man. It's like, it's yeah. like, yeah, he's playing out of his mind right now. So, you know, it's, yeah. really, it's really great to see. Yeah, and Tyrone, I want to thank you for calling in. And you, you asked some very valid questions about Adam Gaze and what he's doing out there. You know, I, I got a question of myself. You know, why are you running dive when plays on games, third long? Man. You know, well, why, why are you doing that? Why are you <laughs> running dive plays on third and long and giving up on drives? You know, I, but those are just questions that I have that I see out there. But I'm excited about the victory. That's that's. I want to stay positive. You know, I, I'm excited about what we did out there, and I want to get your thoughts on Griffin and the way that he's playing. Do you think the all his the, the performance that he's putting on, the way he's going out there and making plays, do you think that's going to make it really hard for Herndon to get back on the field ahead of him whenever he gets healthy? Not at all. I think both of them on the field together was probably the plan anyway. You know, saying in the long run, I mean, Herndon is just an athletic freak. But, I mean, he's been playing well. I mean, he's been Sam's safety blanket when we thought Herndon would be. So having having two is always better than having one. Um, it's just, like I said, it's really your offensive coordinator really divides things up. We were, of, we were, we were in a lot of two um, tight end sets last week that really helped out. You know what I'm saying? It was hard to cover, you know. But Washington's probably the worst 
in the league in third down. So that's why they made it look so easy, you know. But, um, you know, and the guys are playing really well. I mean, Sam threw the ball well. The, the one little mistake he made, should have got rid of the football. But, you know, he's, he's moved. If you really watch Sam, man, he really moves well in the pack, and he's so comfortable. But the last couple of weeks, you know, we were marching down the field. Like, it, I'm telling you, we said this last week, Gates' first 15 plays are his best plays, dude. I am telling you. He is a – the first 15 the last three weeks have been the best plays all season. That's, you know what I'm saying? Figure out the best 40 plays and we'll be good to go. We'll win a lot more games. But we, we still have to run the ball better. We need more balance. You know, I like to see us run the ball about 25 to 30 times a game to make it easier for Sam. So when Sam really is able to stretch the field and do things like that, it'll be a whole lot easier for him, man. But especially with the line doing better, they're doing better in pass blocking. It's not doing better as better in run blocking. But Bilal Powell, I think a lot of the runs have been on Le'Veon, too, because he's waiting too long. you got to hit the hole because Bilal was hitting the hole and they were there. He was getting chunks of yards. So, you know, I mean, I was excited with, with that so far. You know, and that was funny. It's funny you said that was what I was going to say. First of all, it was great to see Bilal Powell getting back on the field and getting, like, significant carries during, like, quality time. But the other thing is, you could almost make an argument that he's the better fit right now, and they should spread Le'Veon Bell out to, like, the slot as a receiver just based on, like, the way they play the game. Like, Powell just hits the hole. The little hole he goes. He doesn't dance around the kind of wiggle and be patient. You could almost make a case that Powell should play a little bit more, man, to be honest with you. Definitely. And he, like you said, Tyson, why not use, you know, I mean, and don't get me wrong, Montgomery's been okay, but Montgomery's not really getting it done. Why not put Powell back there and, and stress Le'Veon? Listen, there's no linebacker in this league that can cover Le'Veon Bell. It's just impossible. Yeah. I mean, this guy runs terrific routes. If you watch that pass from Sam, that was beautiful. Like, that route was yep. beautiful. Why not, why not do more of that? I mean, if you want to, like, if you stretch a team out and Sam gets the ball in his hands quick, that's going to make any offensive line, even if you have a bad one, it'll make them, you know what I'm saying, make them look better. Sam's getting the ball out of his hands quicker. But what we're running the problem is, is when Gage try to, try to run these simple routes and these guys are jumping on it, and then Sam has to hold the ball a little longer. That's the issue right there. But if you have more balance of letting Sam, of having a solid run game, you know, then that leads you to play action. You know what I mean? Stuff like that works. You know, but it, yeah. it's about coaching. But I don't want to hear no one say that, yo, we won two games against two teams we should have beat. Now, Gaze is the big thing coming. No, I'm always happy with a just victory. And I don't want to seem like I'm, I'm, I'm ungrateful that we won. You know what I'm saying? Because I never root for us to lose. But, I mean, just being honest, our coach is not a very good coach. I mean, you know, yeah. he won two games. I mean, let's be realistic here. You know, it's all about development of Sam. But you also got to watch that. Let these guys do better. And then with our cornerback situation, I mean, these guys haven't played anybody. I mean, like Washington. Exactly. They didn't have a, they didn't have a quarterback. Yet. <laughs> I mean, he, he, you know, but if you notice, the one thing about Greg Williams I will say is this, man. He gets those guys up and ready to play. The only thing that, that gives me a problem is when we get a little bit of lead, he gets too comfortable with these with these. With these these plays he's calling when he's giving these guys time. No, keep apply that pressure the whole game. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. But right now we're number one against the run, and number one with uh, less points allowed running the ball. So right now, you know that that's amazing. If we can fix our cornerback situation. We'll be doing some things on defense. Yeah, and, and that's something I know that we're going to address. You know, coming this off season as well is finding that corner. That's something that we should address. So Joe Douglas should definitely have you know, some feelers out there to, you know, figure out what we're going to do there at that position because there's a big-time need there. But like you talked about, Bless Austin is a guy that I think could be a solid depth guy, depth guy along with Millette as well. Those guys are playing pretty solidly out there. But I want to get your thoughts on Neville Hewitt and his return. That guy looked pretty solid, didn't he? Yeah, always, man. You know, yo, man, you know what's so crazy? He's been a thumper, man. You know what I'm saying? He's been a thumper. The, the biggest thing with Neville is, you know, having them checking backs out, the, having them checking running backs out the backfield is, is is probably the hardest thing. But I think with Neville, well, Neville, the biggest thing about getting Neville back, especially this week coming up against Oakland, he's going to – they don't, run, they don't throw the ball to their backs on the field. They try to jam it down your throat, and Neville's going to clog that hole up. He doesn't mind putting his body in there, flying around, you know what I'm saying, getting to the hole, smacking somebody in the mouth. So that was a great comeback to having them back, man. And like you said, Joe, earlier, definitely to lock a guy like that up. That's the kind of guy you want on your team, the guy that leaves it out there. You know what I'm saying? So, you know, just excited yeah. about the way the guys are playing. But I can't get over the hype because my heart's been broken all season long. So I, I would love to win five baby. games in a row. Jump on the train, Tyson, my friend. I would... Five in a row. <laughs> Here comes Adam Gates and the boys. 
Here you know, we go. Listen, I would love to win. I would, no, listen, Joe, seriously. I would love to win five in a row, but I've, dr- I've been drinking a Kool-Aid for like the last five years. And y'all have teased <laughs> me and more. dogged me and just <laughs> no. threw me all under the bus. I'm not doing that now, man. This is the new Adam Gaser. <laughs> hey. <laughs> you know, but um, one, one more thing I want to say, guys, before you let me go. Um, you know what I'm saying? The, the, the great thing about what happened is, man, last week, is that we played good football. And watching Jamal Adams, you know what I'm saying, really step up so doing all the talking, going out there, knocking people down, man, it's been amazing, bro. So I'm excited about that. Tyrone, good to hear from you, man. Good to hear the excitement back in your voice. I'm just, just, I'm telling you now, <laughs> the train is board. We're board. The train is boarding right now, man. Five in a row. Here it comes. I right, talk to y'all Friday, man. Chess up, love you guys, man. One. <laughs> Have a good night, man. <laughs> See, Joe, I got the Adam Gase. I got the fever, man. Yeah, you, you, it's some type of fever. Listen, I want to thank Tyrone for calling in. It's always good to hear from him. Look, I, I think Tyrone, you know, just like the rest of us, keeping things in perspective. That, that's what he you know, was pretty much saying. Hey, we beat, you know, a Redskins team, but they're not they're not a good football team. We've got to do this against better competition. So he's keeping things in perspective as well as I am, too. So, you know, it, it, it's a good win, but we've got to move forward and going forward. We've got to be better teams. All right, we're going to go to Nigel. Nigel, what's up, man? Gentlemen, how y'all doing? Hey, Dude, Jackson, I'm doing hey, great, man. We got doing? two in a row. We're doing great, man. This is, this is the time to be alive right now. They legalized marijuana in New York State, so I understand for the euphoria and stuff like that. Uh, <laughs> no, no, it's all good. It's all good. It's all good. But, but hold on. You're not buying in? put things in context. No, hold on. Remember a couple of weeks ago when I was saying if they bring Gates back next year and stuff like that, that I was done with the Jets? Remember that part? I, I just want to talk about that yep. quickly, right? Yeah. You yep. know who talked me off the ledge? You know who talked me off the ledge? Chris Johnson. When he came out and said, listen, it is what it is. We're not going to fire Gates. This is what it is. I said, okay. And you know the one thing that saved his job? It's the continuity between him and the players and all like that. And it shows. Now, moving on, I think that Sam is getting a grasp of this offense. In these last two games, he looks comfortable running. No, he's getting a grasp of it. I'm not saying he's fantastic in this offense, but he's getting a hold of it. He looks a little bit more comfortable. And also to have Fisham back, that's a big help because he's not getting his doors blown off. Could it be? And I want to thank you for calling in, Nigel. But look, I understand Sam has looked good these last two weeks. But do, don't yes. you think that that could also be a mixture of the fact that we played two really bad teams? Yes, in absolutely. Two weeks? No, absolutely. So, no, no. I'm okay, saying that. Ahead. Yes, absolutely, absolutely. Okay. But the thing is, all I want from the Jets for the rest of this year is some continuity. Okay, it's not so much of the wins and losses, but at least be competitive and be competent when you're playing these football games. Just don't look like, you know, you just don't know what you're doing, which will eventually happen with the Jets. <laughs> like yeah, you know, listen, and, and that's – I think that's what people have been talking about since the start of the season, that, you know, even if we weren't winning games, because, you know, some people thought this this team was on the verge of taking the next step, that we wanted to see competent football yeah. out there. But we've seen more, you know, non-competent football than we've seen competent football. But, again, you know, we, we, we've, we've strung two wins together. We've beat two teams. And so we're all, you know, most of us are keeping perspective, but we're positive as well. But, you know, there, there's still some, some things here to see. But I'll tell you what, the play of Darnold, as you talked about a little bit earlier, has definitely been something yes. that has been something to rave about. This kid has really stepped up and done his thing. And I want to get your thoughts on this. How do you feel about the way he went out there and threw four TDs against the Redskins? Yes. 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 But the thing is, I think it was the third quarter, right, where he audible and he got them to jump off sides, Okay. That is a very good sign. That means that he's getting, he's feeling this offense. You understand what I'm saying? The four touchdowns was great. But that part, when he got them to jump offside, I said, okay, okay. He's starting, you, you can see he's starting to get into this offense because a couple of weeks ago he was seeing ghosts. But now he, he kind of understands the system. Now he's seeing touchdowns. He Right, he's seeing touchdowns, but the good thing is, see, if he can grow with Gates, I think it's going to be a good thing. 
you know, not a bad They're thing. growing right before okay. our eyes, man. Nigel, they're growing right before our eyes. We are, they, this is it, man. We are Sarcasm rolling. is noted. Bring out the Raiders. sarcasm is noted. Exactly, yeah, Nigel. Thing. Thank you for not <laughs> yeah. falling for that. Come on, Thank man. No, 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 okay. It's okay. This is like the 12-step is... jet program. We all sit around and we talk about, you know, how we hate this team, but we love them to death and stuff like that. No, but Nigel, but, think but about the it. One thing, they, they're doing, mm-hmm. hold on, they're doing everything we've asked them to do. They, they finally put Le'Veon Bell at the slot. They finally have Sandal yeah. rolling out of the pocket. They're spreading things and around. They're getting Powell. everybody involved. And they saw Bilal Powell. There it I is. He's on the side of the milk carton. They got Bilal yep. out there. Yes. They even got Josh Adams out there. Yes. Yes, yes, yes. But also, the oh. okay, all right. Oh, boy. But also, I want to talk about the defense. I'll just I want to talk about the defense. Play that garbage. <laughs> wow. Well, it's all new anyway, types of new lows around here. Go, go ahead, I want to talk about the defense, okay? Interesting. Greg Williams, hey, you, you, you got to tip your hat off to this guy. This guy, he got, he's got, he has the team. The defense selling out for him because he's not going to allow them to slack off, right? And also with Quentin Williams, give him a pass, okay? He's a baby, okay? He he's, a, he's not looking good this season, all right? But he's a he's a young dude. He's only what twenty twenty one years old. Give him a pass this season. Maybe he's just lost in the source, you know? What? To what? Yes. No, you can't. Oh. I'm just saying. I'm not listening. I know. Listen. I know you got you walking around with a hammer and everything looks like a nail. So give the kids, give the kids a break, okay? Give, give, give you a break. Why are we gonna, okay? But tell me again why we're giving a break. What is the reason now? What is the reason? Because we have no choice. We can't do the draft over again, okay? I wanted Josh Allen, but hey, you know you can't get what you want. So let's not instead of giving him a pass. Instead of giving him a pass. How about we start holding him accountable for the rest of the season? Say, listen, no, just, why is everybody but you, you making splash plays? You, you, listen, every week on this show, oh, we you guys the are choosing someone. Here. No, no, no. Every week on this show, y'all looking for somebody to shoot into the sun. Okay? Not me. I've been praising everybody. I'm trying to the rocket ship. Listen, we are, <laughs> yeah, we are on a roll. Five in a row. You, I'm praising everybody. Yeah, but no, no, no. I no, bought in. Okay, hold on. Okay, listen, you're going to have a Raiders team that's going to be very motivated, okay? They got to so win this Bring game. them on. I don't they... care. John Gruden's antiquated. Who cares? Derek Carr's overrated. <laughs> well, well, hold on now. Some guys are playing, and they got over all the crazy, hold on, all that crazy stuff that happened Dude, they're during West training Coast camp. They got over on it. The East Coast. They're walking into a horse well, nest. It? Jamal Adams, the yeah, company, I'm... care of business. Five in a row. Oh, woo. Woo. Uh, I'll, I hope so. But but the last thing, guys, look, I don't want the Jets to win too many games because this draft order what? thing, we, we just need to. Yeah, no, 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 no. No, we I'm need here. this draft. Wait, we we need this. No, no, no. Guys, we need Dude, this draft. Dude, come on. We need this draft back. In, we need, we this draft need back. to string no. other wins and start winning games and establishing some kind of some kind of culture here. Losing is not the answer here unless you want to get the coach fired. No, no, talking losing. about draft Listen. position now? Oh, yes. Lord, mercy. Yes. Oh, wait a minute. Hold on. You so now you're in tank mode. Five you're, games? you're in tank mode now? You want to no, lose I'm the rest of the season? Mode. I'm in, well, you I'm know in this semi-tank coach? Tank mode. Semi-tank. No, no, you're either tanking or you're not. You can't do a half tank? No, there is no half tank. That's the Giants do that kind of stuff. We're either all in or all out. <laughs> there is no middle. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> anyway, gentlemen, it's wonderful talking to you. I will listen to the rant, and I will speak to you all next week, all right? <laughs> Have a good night, man. Thanks for calling in. See, Joe, I'm making everybody happy tonight. Everybody's laughing, they're happy, and they're all buying in. Plenty of Kool-Aid all the time. Yeah, well, first off, I want to thank Nigel for calling in. It's great to talk to him. He, you know, brings the knowledge when he comes to the show. But, uh, you know, he picked up on your on your sarcasm as well. You're just trying to set people up. You're just trying to set them up so you can make fun of them later on down the line. Everybody sees through your trolliness. So no, nobody's dealing with that. But, you know, well, look, everybody, every, yes, you are trolling. Everyone has their own perspectives on what's going on. But I, I urge people you know, the key perspective about where this team at and what is actually happening. Okay, so yeah, don't start getting crazy. Happening. We have the number one run defense. We have <laughs> an offense that's starting to click. 
We have an all pro safety. We got a quarterback on the rise. We got Le'Veon Bell. This is it, man. And a home game against a team from the West Coast. If they don't win this week, it's a disappointment. Okay. That's it. This is sky's <laughs> limit. Five in a row, and they're all bought in. Okay. Anything okay. less is unacceptable. All right, well. Look, I'm keeping things in perspective. We'll see what happens, but Tyson is something else, man. What? Wait, man, I'm just listening. I, I'm just taking all the feedback I received from our YouTube channel, Let's Talk Jets Radio, and all the uh. on Twitter, because Twitter's full of them. There are no dumb people on Twitter. They are all experts. I'm taking all that feedback, and I'm applying it to the show. That's all. Okay. All right. All right, well. I'll tell you what, like I said, everybody just needs to keep perspective. Don't get too high, okay? Don't get too high on this team. There are some issues. We play two bad teams. We we got two victories, but we got a, you know other good teams that are coming up, and we just need to see consistency against them as well. All right, we're going to go to Mr. NYSF Magazine. What's up, Jay? <laughs> I'm not fooled either, guys. I'm not fooled by the two wins. I don't Five know what you're questions. talking about. Five in a row. Ty, I'm not fooled by your act. I'm not fooled by any of it. You guys, you guys, I may have been, I may have been born, but I was not born yesterday. This act is not working on me, my friend. I know what's going on here. We want to change. Wait, we want to see development. In the last two weeks, Dan Darlton played very well. The defense is swarming around. They're improving. Statistically, everything is going right. We're trending in the right direction. Adam Gase is giving good press conferences. Nobody's mad. There's no planes flying. Everything is perfect. Ty, well, let me let me give you a little refresher course to where our heads were at two weeks ago. Okay, <laughs> but see, we had winning, just Jay, lost winning. to the. We had Adam just lost to turned the us around. Oh, Adam Gase turned us around. They Dolphins. faced adversity. We had just lost Jay. back-to-back games to the Jaguars and Dolphins. Do you understand Ty, what, what happened here? What was the last word on the plane? My plane. My plane. What was the last word on the on the end of that banner? It said it didn't say fire Adam Gase. What did it say? Fire Adam Gase. What? Now. Yep, it said now. And the reason why it said now was because they needed to fire him right now so that nobody got tricked into believing that beating the Giants Listen, and the Redskins the and the Bengals tough. makes him a good coach. The going got tough, and Gase got going. He rallied the troops and You're not got gonna troll me. turned around. You're not going to troll me, sir. I, I see through this act. I see through the it. That's the I, I know what you're doing here. I know what you're doing line. here. It's a good. They were rock good bottom. Cop, they were rock bottom. They got man of the people. We got. Fashion. That's it. You've seen the light. The going got you must have had he a got chat. Going. He got us going. You, you must have had a long chat with our good friend Fireman Ed. Man, you guys are sipping the gate school Man, I like but, listen, Jay. I want to thank you for calling in. I'm glad that you're not buying this troll act that he's putting on. Tyson no way. is trying this, everyone, and, and I'm, I'm glad that you just not getting involved with it. But uh, listen, I, I'm right there with you. I'm keeping perspective as well. <laughs> I know some fans feel differently. You know, they're they're you know people are talking about ripping off however many more, and that we can make a playoff run and all this stuff. And I'm like, listen, we need to see more consistency from this team before we start talking about any of that stuff. Especially you, the fact that yep. again, we just came off playing two bad teams. And these two teams couldn't do a lot of things that we've seen out of, you know, mid-level teams that we played this year that we completely got rocked and destroyed by. But just keeping with this game and, and, and the victory here, a big part of it was our defense. And Greg Williams and his calls and adjustments, especially with the, the injuries that we had, has been masterful. What are your thoughts about him and what he's doing kind of transform this defense into a defense that just gets after it? You ready for my hot take of the night? Because it's against what everybody else is saying on this topic. Um, yeah, our, I mean, the defense played well against Washington. But to be fair, our defense has been, I don't care what the numbers say. and I don't understand these numbers that are being tossed around all over Twitter and these PFF stats about how great our defense has been this year. Dude, our defense has been garbage this year. And they, they, they've, they've played better than, than what, they've played better than, than what their talent, I guess, is, is you know, no. Don't boo me. Here we go. Don't boo me. Come on. No, don't, don't boo me. Boo 16 sacks listen. in three games. 16 sacks Fine. in, in three games. games. In the last two games against bad teams. But, dude, what did they do against – how did they look don't against Patrick? How did they look against Minshew? How did they look – dude, come on. This defense hasn't been able to get off the field man. all season. They have figured out. 21 points. They got, they got rocked by, you know, the first three games. Well, three the last possessions of the game against the Eagles. The Patriots. 
So, okay, listen, Jamal Adams is playing out of his freaking mind. So, yeah, that's – Thanks to Greg Williams. Okay, well, whoever you want to thank for that. I'm not trying to bash Greg, Greg Williams, per se, but I, but I am going to – I got to bring everyone back down to reality on what our defense is. Wow, we have here. no middle so linebackers. Defense, we, we, we have got, no, no middle linebackers and no corners, I and understand. they're overachieving. No, they're totally overachieving. It's unbelievable what, what he's been able to squeeze out of the, the, uh, the talent that he has on the field, for sure. He has no cornerbacks. He has no linebackers. He's got a, he, uh, you know, he's got a, he's, well, he, Neville Hughes has playing well. He's got a, a, a solid no-name defensive line in Jamal Adams. But let's, I, I just want to be clear, because I keep seeing everybody talking about how great the defense is playing, and I don't really get that, man. I, they, they, got a, they, they got off to a 14-point lead against the Giants. Before you knew it, they were down 27-21. You know, they, before that, they got shredded by Fitz. They got shredded by Minshew. They've been getting shredded all season. I don't understand where these man, stats the are coming from that were like the third best defense this in the league. This is negativity. I just can't no, take this, man. There's just, so much negativity here. It's just here. fair. It's, it's just fair. It's just fair. I, I got to be honest with what I'm seeing out there. Like, Jamal Adams has been playing great. And I love and I loved to see how Jamal Adams is playing. That's been amazing. And he's obviously, he followed up his two worst games of his career with his two best games of his career. It's crazy. But, um, but the defense hasn't been that good. I mean, let's just be honest about it. It just hasn't. I mean, how many times have they had to get off the field on third down penalties and, and you know, third down conversions all season? They've just been getting yeah, how many apart. games were they on the, the field? Worst how many games were they on the field for 40 minutes because the offense wasn't doing anything? That's fair. That's a fair point. I know. A fair point, I know but... my team, man. I know we're turning the corner. I can see it. I've seen the light, Jay. You have to just get aboard. <laughs> we you have to figure it my, out and my, get aboard. My, my only point is this. My only point is this. Let's see. I, okay. My eyes have been opened with a two-game winning streak, okay? Uh-huh. I give them credit See? for winning two games. No, no, I'm I not saying, it. listen, no. My eyes have been opened by a two-game winning streak against two terrible teams, mm-hmm. okay? But let's see when the competition level steps up this week against the Raiders and there's an actual NFL team on so the other side the of, of, on of the field. Once they beat the Raiders on Sunday, you're going to call back and say, okay, you were right? Ty, you, you don't even believe what you're saying. You're just saying it. I do. I believe. I've bought no, it. No, you I, don't. I, I've seen it. When, when I hear you, that I Sam saw your the Twitter, I... to work things out. <laughs> don't, Ty, you're a real man. You don't delete tweets like some people do, man. You go look at your Twitter nope, during never. the game. You were bashing Adam Gase nonstop during that game. Running on third down, you were calling him a clown. All of a sudden, two days later, he's <laughs> man, not buying it. Not buying it. I had, I but had that's all right. I had to read more into it. I had, to, I, had to, I had to hear that once I heard that him and Sam are working together as a team, as a united front, I, I, I'm like, that's what I need to hear. And now I'm good. Look, this is a litmus test. Sure. On Sunday. <laughs> I will, I, I'm going to watch this game. I'm very curious to see how they respond because now they won two games and they're starting to get a little confidence, you know, it looks like on the field. So let's see them do it against NFL-level competition. And if they can, then they're taking steps in the right direction. But I'm not buying it. I, I still don't yeah. think that the team is, is ever going to win anything of any significance with Adam Gase. I, I, I mean, how ridiculous is it Sam Darnold has to go into Adam Gase's office and change his offense around for him? And, and exactly. Dwell Loggins is throwing, is throwing the penalty flags and, and Greg Williams <laughs> runs the defense. Well, then what the hell is Adam Gase doing? Like, I think he had to wait for, for Sam Darnold to walk into his office and say, dude, your offense is terrible, and, like, let's try doing stuff that fits me. Like, is, wasn't he brought here to figure out what, what Darnold does well and, and elevate Darnold? Darnold had to elevate Gaze as a head coach. Sounds a lot like Peyton Manning. I mean, yeah. I, like, what, what's going on here? I, don't, I just don't exactly. get it. And everyone is like, all you have to do is win two games against the Giants and the Redskins for everybody to start talking playoffs. I, you know, I, I hate to be the voice of reason, but, I mean, Jesus. I mean, come on, people. <laughs> let's let's, let's yeah, win a look, game against a decent team first. Yeah, Jay, it, it, look, I'm right there with you. I, I, that situation where you have – Darnold has to go into the office and say, listen, this offense is not working. We need to change things. Here's what we need to change. Tailor this to me. It's like – it's mind-boggling. You're supposed to be the offensive genius. You're supposed to already come in with a plan that is tailored to his strength. <laughs> That's what every other coach, every other offensive genius with the quote fingers does in the NFL. That's what Sean Payton does. 
when, when, listen, when Drew Brees went down and, and Bridgewater stepped up, Sean Payton tailored his offense to what you know uh, Bridgewater did well. That's that's what McVay did. That's what Andy Reid does. That's what that's what uh, the guy does up there in Philly. That's how he won a, a Super Bowl with a backup quarterback. He wasn't running the exact same offense that he was running with Wentz in. No, he said, "Hey, I got foals. I got to change things up." That's exactly what he did. How can you not do the exact same thing if you're supposed to be the offensive guru? If you're supposed so, to be the guy that was brought in to groom and mature Sam, the big sticking point for him was, I want to work with Sam Darnold. Well, if you want to work with Sam Darnold, why would you come in with this crusty-ass offense that doesn't fit him and then just go, well, things just not working. Guess i got to stand here and watch it happen. You're not going to make any changes. But, again, that's Adam Gaze and no adjustments. Go ahead, Jay. Andy Reid had, had – Alex Smith playing at a, at a Pro Bowl level. He had Patrick Mahomes, mm-hmm. like the best quarterback in football, and he had Matt Moore filling in for him, playing playing pretty well. You know, I mean, yeah. like this guy, this guy is no offensive genius. And you know what the biggest thing is, man? What really irks me about that whole about that whole story of Sam Dog going in there is that he wanted to make it like when like the the story, like say, like it was some kind of like fraudulent like Disney cartoon or something that Sam Darnold walks into that office and then. And then Adam Gates looks at him, and his response is, "Finally, you fi-. like? Are you kidding me, dude? That's like, 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 like you're trying to make it like you were tanking the season, trying to get Sam Darnold to walk into your office to have some aha moment so you could prove some point to him after going one and seven and getting the guys freaking brains beaten in, bro. I, I, the story's coming out of Florham Park, man. It is so ridiculous and so over the top." With the PR spin that's going on over here. It's like a made-for-TV movie. I've never seen anything like it, and people are buying into it. They're like, oh, Sam Darnold and Adam Gates, they're working well together. Better stick it out for another five years of this crap. If Sam Darnold needs to, needs to call out his offense, then what the hell do we need Adam Gates for? It's just, dude, I'm not buying into anything Adam Gates is selling, and I don't care how many times he can beat the damn Redskins. That's the worst team I've ever seen play in my Once life. Once he beats the Raiders, look out, boys and girls, look out. Beat the Raiders. Shut me up. I, if they beat the Raiders, I'll call up and take my take my. I don't see it happening. So if they beat the Raiders, I will certainly call in. I'll be a man of my word. I'll take it on the chin. But I don't see that happening. You and they beat the Raiders, nothing. and they beat you and, lose. Good day, sir. You beat the Raiders. You beat the Dolphins, and you beat the the uh, Bengals. That's right. Now you're talking. And you, and, and you, win, and you get and you. No, I'm not saying. It, I'm saying if that happens, and you get to six and seven, winning five happens. games in a row. I will give. I will applaud that man and say, you know what? Maybe you're starting to earn your job. But then, let's be the then what you do is then what happens when they win five in a row? You fly a plane saying you're sorry. <laughs> I'll jump out the plane. <laughs> <laughs> I'll talk to you later. Oh man, man. <laughs> have a good night, guys. <laughs> See, Joe, this show is all well, – see what happens when we win? We all have a good time now. Now everybody's happy, and we're all embracing success. <laughs> well, I, listen, first off, I want to thank Jay for calling in. And, you know, I, I, I love Jay. I love talking to him. Um, great guy. But he's keeping perspective, just like the rest of the fans that have called into the show. They're not, they're not, being, they're not buying into your troll job. They're not doing that. Not buying into they're not they're buying team in. on the rise. Yeah. They're, they're figuring things out. No. <laughs> Okay, well, I'll tell you what. They're not buying into that, just like I, I'm not buying into it as, as well. But, look, everyone's keeping a perspective about the team. They just want to see more consistency. They want to see the team look competitive or, or beat the Raiders. You know, Don't go out there and look like you don't know what you're doing. We need to see that. But we're all celebrating the victory. We're all happy for it. But, again, we're keeping perspective that this was just a, this was a really bad Redskins team that just is completely dysfunctional. See, now, our next caller I know will support me. I know that this guy will have everything that I agree with right here. Steve, what's up, man? Hey, what's up, guys? Five in a row. You ready? Sure. Why not? Five in a row. It can happen. It can very easily happen. No, I mean, okay. Well, I'm not going to jump the gun right away. We're going to talk about this game. You know, Great team win, you know, I, and i got to give, you know, Adam Gaze credit. He coached a very good football game on Sunday. I mean, I know we played against a dysfunctional, crappy Redskins team. And, and you know what, at times, you know, I kind of felt bad, you know, as Joe said earlier in the show, when the players on the Redskins were laughing at him. I mean, 
it almost sounds like the Redskins are just basically just giving up, you know, on their season. But as you know, as the season goes on, you know, Sam played a great game. Jamal Adams is having another Pro Bowl type of season this year. Arthur yeah. Millett and, and Bless Austin, I'd rather have them play corner than Nate Harrison and Tremaine Johnson. Rather have those two play play because I thought they both played really good on Sunday against mm-hmm. the Redskins. And another thing was too, finally, Adam Gates finally used Lady on Bell in the right situation by having him play receiver at times because when we because it was almost like the Lady on Bell that we saw when he was in Pittsburgh with the Steelers. And something I will always give Adam Gaze a little bit of credit for that he's done this season compared to what Todd Bowles did. I like it when Adam Gaze actually does go for it on fourth and short plays. Yep. Because I always remember from he's last aggressive. year, Todd Bowles always punted or kicked field goals. Yeah. The thing I yeah. give Adam Gaze credit for is that he is aggressive and will take a chance. So guys, go See, away. that's Questions. what I'm talking about. That's yeah. how the culture is changing. The man is figuring it out, and that's why we're winning. Five zero, Steve. Steve made my point for me. Thank you, man. Well, listen, okay. first, first off, yeah, first off, Steve, I want to thank you for calling in, man. You're always bringing the fire, and, you know, you, you got some solid takes there. But I want to get your thoughts on this. What are your thoughts on the reports about Darnold going to Gaze and telling him, hey, this offense is not fitting me, it, it doesn't work here, and kind of helping him change things up? No, it definitely was a good move by Sam, by, by Sam doing that. And you know what, and I'm going to say this again. Sam Darnold is our future, okay? He is our future quarterback. And you know what? Those that kind of a game that Sam had against the Redskins, those are the that is those are kind of games that we need him to play uh, against very good football teams. I mean, it was like a practice as Tyson said because the Redskins game was kind of like a practice. But now we're going to see what happens on Sunday when when we when we play against the Oakland Raiders. I agree, man. And listen, Sunday's going to be a great test. But, Steve, if you look at everything we've asked for, we've asked for the defense to tighten up, we've asked for Sandal to play better, better play calling, all these things. Don't you think this team is now headed in the right direction, heading into Sunday, where they have a lot of momentum, they have a lot of confidence, and they're kind of all buying in? I still think that there are still some, some things that still need to be filled in with this team. But you know something? If these players can continue to play well, be competitive, you know, and and things can go in the right direction, definitely, yep. if they can get you the W show? against the Oakland Raiders. But you tell the thing Steve. is, though, <clears throat> but the thing is, though, we're going we're gonna to wait until, you know, because we're going to talk more about the Raiders on Friday when we get ready yeah, to play them. You already, you already have that Sunday. vibe, though, Steve. You, you're feeling I know you're feeling it. You're, you're just... You're chomping at the bit. You're ready. You're like, you know what I bought in. Like, we're going to beat the Raiders. I can already sense it. I already sense Friday at around 9.15, like, you know what? Beating the Raiders. I feel it, dude. Uh, okay, before we continue, Tyson, uh, how much Kool-Aid yes, have you been drinking tonight? Oh, no, my I'm not, no, dude, I don't drink, I don't drink Kool-Aid, man. I don't drink Kool-Aid. I, no, I listen to all the experts on social media that have I'm at Talk Jets Radio on Twitter and Let's Talk Jets Radio on YouTube. The experts tell me what I need to know, and now I just react to it. And now I've learned that the team has learned how to win. So now under Adam Gase, they're going to start winning. This has to be, honestly, the happiest mood you've ever been in for a very long time for a Jets Talk Radio show. Hey, man, dude, the Jets have won two in a row, and, and our franchise quarterback, the beloved Sam Darnold, is playing very well. What is there not to be happy about? No, no, no. no it's we have a all good pro thing. safety. But, I mean, Jamal yeah, Adams no. is arguably one of the best defensive players in football. I was actually saying that earlier today to, um, to a couple of people at work about it. And, of course, my boss is a Patriots fan. He was like, nah, I don't think so. It's the truth. Yeah, so, I told him. Steve, I told you him have it's the truth, but he's a. Hey, yeah, huh. but. Um, but anyway, you know, it's something I also, you know, wanted to say, you know, really, really quickly. You know, the, the thing was that I was really impressed with in the game, too, was was the way, you know, how how the Jets, you know, finally, you know, like got into a rhythm. You know, if we had, like, some yep. of this, 
some of this that happened in the, earlier in the season against you know some of the good teams we played. We we played you know we, it, it would have been a whole different season. It would have been a whole different season. But at the same time, you know what? We're going to take this. Like I said, I've always said this before. One week at a time. You know, getting ready for Oakland on Sunday. Steve, you know what, though, Steve? There's a very important lesson that we have to learn in life. It's not how you What's start, that? it's how you finish. It's not how you yep, start, it's how you finish. Oh. Right? Oh, my goodness. So have, well, have a good night, man. Have a good night. Bye bye. Joe, your thoughts? Man, that, you know, <laughs> I want to thank Steve for calling in. Um, it's always good to talk to him. You are a pure troll, Roush. I mean, you you really you you really take the next step every year. Your your troll development has been awesome. I think Gaze has definitely helped you with that. This is this is crazy, but you know, no one's buying in. I will tell you that no one's buying in. Steve, and, I've already know, sucker Steve. In. I've it. already got Shaq in, Nigel's in. I've got them no. one by one. They're all caving in. <laughs> Man. I can't believe you. I mean, you you are completely ridiculous, dude. Wow. We're going to go to Mike Ooh. in Jersey City. Mike bought it. I know Mike's ready. Mike, what's up, man? What's up, guys? How you doing, man? Not bad. All right. You? Oh, dude, I'm, I couldn't be better. Things are good. San Darl's playing well. What else could you ask for? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to give it two sides of the story here. Um, well, as everyone knows, it, it was the Redskins. But as we all watched the game, we all saw that in the third quarter, uh, zero points were scored by us, by both teams, but we're focused on us. So I think anyone, it would be safe to say that had this team been anyone but the Redskins, perhaps the Saints, let's say, I believe they do come back and beat us. Uh, the fourth quarter did have somewhat, you know, they did somewhat start to come back. And so, you know, I don't want to sugarcoat it. And, you know, I, it's just like, you know, luckily it was the Redskins. I think if it was anyone else, they would have come back and beat us. Um, and it is a little, it, it's, it's not surprising that Sam Darnold basically ended up going to Gase and saying like, hey, this is, this is how it needs to be ran now. Um, and thank the Lord he actually can utilize Le'Veon Bell like he should be utilized. So I guess someone sees that on the Jets team. Um, But the other side I want to point out is how different the team is even after we all said uh, after the trade deadline that we all thought that the locker room was going to implode with all the rumors and everything swirling around Jamal Adams and Le'Veon Bell. I will say that I'm, I'm, I'm... uh, relatively pleased, probably more than pleased with how the team has come after that fact, and they kind of exactly. yeah yeah it's it's not it's, 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 it's not they're not yeah they're they're not great teams, but still we we thought it was the end of the world with the with, the, with uh, what we were hearing about Jamal and, and Bell and and everything, but you know they come back and they've looked uh, however you want to spin it yeah they're bad teams they're playing, but they've looked a lot better. And I don't know if that has to maybe it, – it almost seems like Leonard Williams was more than a problem than we thought because <laughs> that, def- that, that defensive line looks pretty good to me. I mean, seriously, it's like Nathan Shepard. Who, who would have thought? This guy was a third-round pick, uh, you know, a year, year, year ago, year, more than a year ago. We thought this guy was like a long gone, and here he is with, what, three, four sacks in the last two weeks? You know, yeah. so it, it's just – I don't really know what to make of it. I guess I'm kind of on like the fence where you know what, beat the beat the Raiders, beat the Ravens, and then we can start talking. Even though they're not. Yeah, ready, yeah. But yeah, and I, I want to thank you for calling in, man. You you know you, you're bringing the fire. Listen, I think what happened is I mean, we did lose to the Dolphins, we did get smacked by the Jags, but I think that this this you know, and there was a, a bunch of other stuff that came out as well. The Quincy New and stuff, the like KO, fog. I mean. Listen, I, I'm I'm talking about the present, you know, but those things did happen as well. But, you know, look, I, I think playing the Giants and the Redskins, two bad teams back-to-back, has kind of, you know, raised expectations in some fans' minds. It kind of moved, pe- moved people a little bit more out of the way 
of perspective. You know, I, like you said earlier as well, we have to keep in mind that this is the Redskins, and there were times, like you said, there were offensive dips in the game where we didn't score points. But if we had played a better team, if we had played, you know, people that really had passes to do different things, hell, even their offensive coordinator for the Redskins, he was bad as well, pretty much the entire game. Uh, you know, maybe they have more of a chance, but a victory is a victory and we'll take it. But to not look at, you know, what's going on with this team and to just think everything's good, especially when we've looked really bad against solid competition, I don't think is the way to go. we we got to keep perspective in what's going on. And I want to get your thoughts on this. What are your thoughts on Donald having to go to Gaze and talk about, you know, kind of changing up the offense instead of Gaze just doing that anyway, you know, being the offensive guru that he's supposed to be? Well, I mean, that's just simple incompetence. And I think we we all believe that Gase is an incompetent head coach. And there's, you know, just proof after proof after proof, you know, in this in his four-year career as a head coach. Um, I mean, it's, I mean, it's, it's actually, it's, it's so, it's, you really can't make up a logins literally holding the red flag. For like, I, I would have never thought in a million years would an offensive coordinator be like a designated challenger for for an NFL team. Well, you know, so it is, we though, are. it's like Adam Gase is so busy. You know, it is he's on the he's on the bleacher over there, sitting there trying to stare at his iPad, looking at circles upside down. He, he's not even watching the game on the field, so he's got to have yeah, somebody else it, do it because he's not paying attention. It's year four of his career, and he still doesn't literally. He literally does not know how to make in-game adjustments, let alone halftime adjust adjustments. So he isolates himself, sits at the end of the bench, and you know goes into his into his uh, little bubble and sees, you know, what the next five scripted plays are, you know, j- jamming them in his head so he can tell Donald. And it, it just seemed like with what we saw from Le'Veon Bell on Sunday, if, if, if we can confirm that was all Donald's doing and that's what he tried to implement, I mean, it's like here, here we, we have a second-year a second year rookie, you know, a second-year QB, you know, basically overriding a coach and having a better game plan than, than he has. So, so if, yes, if, the Jets, if, the Jets beat the, <laughs> if the Jets beat the Raiders on Sunday, will you start buying in? Um, well, yes, because literally, as far well, as I can remember, we always, get, we always get killed by the Raiders. Like, if we could honestly keep go, it yeah. within 10 points by the Raiders, I, I'd, I'd be happy. We, every year we get Oh, we're by. beating the Raiders, dude. We're beating them. We're winning the game. So but if we I, win I the game on Sunday, wow. you're buying in. I have, a be- I have a question for both of you guys, though. Um, and I was pondering this uh, today and a couple other days. With how well Ryan Griffin is playing, okay, if you are Joe Douglas, would you guys be opposed to putting Hernandez on the block? Or because of his rookie contract and he doesn't cost us anything to have him just give Donald the more weapons? Or do you see if he could get a potential fourth at the best, probably a three for Hernandez? No, I keep I keep Herndon. I mean, Herndon, first of all, can't prove that mm-hmm. he's got to prove that he can stay healthy. He's got absolutely no value at all right now coming off a, an injury riddled season. So you have Griffin as your one, and you have Herndon compete with him. And if, he, if they can both make it, great. I mean, it's just more assets for Sam. I wouldn't do nothing with him. I keep him. So about you, Joe? So then you so then yeah, you would obviously I, I, there, imply you would be signed. Yeah, it, it doesn't really make. I mean, to me, it doesn't Absolutely. really make much sense to like get rid of him at all. I would I would keep Herndon because cool. uh, then you have Griffin, you got Herndon, you have Wesco as well. You know, you can carry three tight ends if that's what you want to do. There's no reason to put him on the block because you're not going to get anything for that dude. He hasn't been healthy, and he's coming off a suspension. Well, exactly. You're not going to get a fourth rounder for a dude coming off a rookie year contract. We had kind of a flash, but that's, that's not enough, you know, so why not just keep the guy, give Donald more weapons, you have more assets here, who knows what could happen, maybe Ryan Griffin, you know, knock on wood, I hope this doesn't happen, maybe he gets an injury and Herndon has to step up, and then we'll see what he has, so why get rid of depth when depth is already a problem on this team, why get rid of a guy that we think could come in and be serviceable? I mean, just, I mean, as we all know, I mean, this this offensive line needs to be completely stripped down and rebuilt. So I'm thinking, I think for me as a fan, it would be it, strategically I'd want to see the Jets just pile on picks. Like even if that means uh, trade back and just give Joe Douglas as many picks as possible so as, as a fan base we can just see where his mind is when it comes to draft. And so 
you know, it's like you know, I'm already looking at like prospects and whatever, and obviously Andrew Thomas. Give me Andrew Thomas, you know. And so it's it's just like we we need a completely offensive line. No, I don't buy Kelvin Beecham playing well all of a sudden. Get him the hell out of here, uh, okay? And so it's oh. just we need a completely new offensive line, and you know, so I, you got to give Joe Douglas as many picks as possible. And obviously, there's going to be a few players who are uh, released, so uh, it doesn't go towards the cap, and we give them some money. But this is, I mean, you know, if because assuming, and it's not even assuming, it's knowing as a fan base, Gase is coming back for 2020. So now what yep. you want is you want as much power in Joe Douglas's hands as possible, as opposed to Gase. You know, so... But anyway, good stuff as always, good. man. And then one su- well, Sunday when they win, you're buying in. So I, we got you on, we got you recorded. So we're, you're on record. <laughs> all right, all right, I'm buying in. See you guys <laughs> good later. night, man. See, Joe, that's another one. They're, I'm just racking them up now. It's four now. I have on my my pattern here. Joe's not even buying it. Even Joe's want to deal with it now. Yeah, no, we're I, gonna I, go. I, listen, I, I, <laughs> I'm not buying that at all. I, you know, I would guess that I don't know if he necessarily bought in. You kind of hit him before he's trying to get out of here. But you know, perspective. It's all about perspective, and that's what a lot of people are keeping perspective. All right, we're going to go to Lou in New Jersey. Lou, what's up, man? All right, fellas, how are you? Look, I'm glad to see the not- Jets are finally, you know, you know, waking up, you know, and getting and getting and getting things done. But I'm not sold. You know, on okay, they got two in a row done, but you know it's against stiff competition. If they go up against you know, you know the stronger teams, they're gonna get clobbered. So um, how do we know that? What if they beat the Raiders? They can go toe to toe with the Raiders. There's no reason why they can't. Strong. Well, the Raiders, yeah, because you know their so-called star quarterback. uh, Oh, I'm sorry, it's the Chargers. He he's a big dope. Yeah. So if they they beat the Raiders, the Raiders are a winning team. I mean, yeah. what, what if they beat the Steelers? Would the Steelers impress you? Steelers are kind of, you know, shaky. You know, they're kind of so inconsistent. I'm not too crazy with that. If they could beat Pittsburgh, yeah, because I think they can. The Raiders, we always had trouble against the West Coast teams. So I'm not really too confident. Yeah, we, have, we have trouble with the West Coast teams on the West Coast. When the West Coast teams come here, we do okay. Yeah, but they put up a fight, so... I think I'm more thinking that they could beat Pittsburgh, but the Raiders. Uh, I'm a little. I'm most skeptical on that. So, but if they do beat the Raiders, would you buy in and say they're they're now making progress? Progress, yes, but let's say like two carried away. I mean, they still, have, you know, they still have a tough hill to climb. You know, with only six games left, even if they run the table, you know, uh, Buffalo and of course uh, them, as a, as you call them, New England, you know, are just way too strong. Yeah. They can beat Buffalo. Yeah, look. Yeah. <laughs> Listen, what, whoa. <laughs> we just I don't get think crazy, so. Tyson. Yeah, he, Tyson, thank you for not buying into the troll job. And I also no, want to thank you for calling control. in. Tyson, Tyson is out of control. But, look, let, let's just take it game by game here, okay, before yeah. people start talking about stacking wins and we can beat this team and we can beat that team. We got the right. Raiders coming up and we'll talk wins. about them on yeah, all right, we got the Raiders coming up. We'll talk about them on Friday, but I, I want to celebrate this victory here, and I want to get your thoughts on this, man, because you look at this situation with the defense. Greg Williams has been making a heck of a game plan every single week, even with all the injuries he's dealt with, all the things that right. have gone wrong defensively. Whoever's out there, he's putting guys in the best position to make plays, man. What are your thoughts about him? Thoughts on wait, thoughts on Darnold. On Greg Williams. Greg Williams, yeah. Well, Williams has shown Williams has shown progress as well. I like I like what he's I like what he's doing. At least Donald's woken up from his uh, ghost episode, so at least we got rid of that. And that's been the main that's been the main problem. And going yeah, after I mean, Gay as well. Hmm. <laughs> yeah, well. So I mean. Well, I mean, so you, overall, you're encouraged by the direction of the team, and Sunday, if they win, you're buying in. That's our summary. Not ex- not yet. I'll be a little bit more convinced, but I'll be totally sold on it. No. Got to win, I think, maybe like three more games. Then maybe you've sold me. Right now, yeah, just, we're just... We're you're going to be sold, my friend. 
Lou, you're going to be sold. They're going to win five in a row. You heard it here first. Thanks for calling what? in. Joe, Joe, I'm telling you, we I had to let him go, man. Uh, but he, <laughs> I wasn't really sure what was happening there. But um, <laughs> listen, we have five people now. We have five callers in a row that have admitted, Joe, once they beat the Raiders, they're buying in. <laughs> well, first off, I want to thank him for calling in, but I don't know if it's five people in a row at all. <laughs> I don't uh, know if six. everybody. Yeah, yeah, whatever. <laughs> that that those I don't think those numbers are accurate at all. But look, people are happy with the win. But from what I'm hearing, you know, most people call in there to keep in perspective. They're not just going with your nonsense. So no, no one's buying your troll job. I'm just speaking facts, man. We're gonna go to our good friend James. James, what's up, man? Guys, how you doing? How was everything? You know, it's always great to get a win, especially against the Redskins. We have a little bit of history with them, and you know, I'm pretty, um, you know, I'm pleased with where we're at, but I'm not buying into, you know, Adam Gase at all. Um, you know, I'm not buying into him one bit. And um, why not? You know, <laughs> why not? You know, um, just based on what we've seen, four touchdowns. Yeah, I don't know how much that's on Adam Gase. I think a lot of that has to do with Sam Darnold. Somebody's got to call the plays. Um, corralling, corral. <laughs> well, we know Sam Darnold is calling the plays right now. You know, we don't we don't know what Gase and Bamboozle. So wait a minute, wait, 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 wait. So when, the, when, the, when the team is struggling, <laughs> when the team is struggling, Gase's play calling sucks. When the team wins, Gase isn't calling the plays. We got to be consistent here, man. Uh, yeah, no. You know what? It seems like a few weeks ago, yeah, Adam right. Gase and his nonsense, that, you know, was Gase's nonsense. Something changed, right? So something changed. I got to yep. believe that must have been Darnold in the offense saying, hey, you know what, Gase? Or uh, Gase you, you call your plays. <sighs> no. I'm not going to give Gase any credit. I'm sorry. I can't. You know, Why? just based they on what I've seen. They were at rock bottom, dude. They were at rock bottom. Everybody wanted them fired, blow out the door. They can't do anything right. Since then, they played their best football of the season. No, I, I can't. You know, Opie, you know, Adam Gase, Googly, I, I can't deal with him. I, I'm not going to give him any credit for wins, for the success of the offense. I think a lot of that has to do with Sam Darnold and solely on Sam Darnold and, and, and Bilal Powell, the players. I think that's more the players and Darnold, you know, audibling at the line and not falling into Gase's nonsense. That's where I'm yeah. at. I'm not ready to give him credit at all. And I think, you know, Darnold, he has, you know, he has ability, obviously. He can survey the field, and he's taking what defenses are giving him, and he's, not, you know, he's maximizing everything. You know, Gage, you know, I've, I've had all I can have. <laughs> that guy, I don't even want to, like, talk about that guy. You know what I mean? I think Greg Williams has been outstanding, you know, coaching up the defense. There's been a lot of good pieces. Special teams is kind of still struggling. We need to get them online. But Adam Gase and his, and his uh, groups of offense, I, I don't want to <laughs> – if it was up to me, they'd already be gone. And he'd just be yeah. winning. I don't want to I don't want to forget about, you know, those first few games and, and, and the incompetence of Adam Gase. I'm not willing to let that go. I'm not willing to forget that. Even if we go exactly. and take out Oakland, even if we go and beat the Raiders, no. <laughs> you know what I mean? I'm yeah. not willing to give Adam Gase credit at all. Yeah, and I want to thank you for calling in. You're speaking the truth. Look, the fact that he had to have Darnold go to him and say, hey, this is not working, and he couldn't make adjustments and figure out himself, like, that just speaks volumes. The fact that you could not figure out, okay, look, what I'm doing through these first, you know, what, eight, nine, ten games is not working for us. I must change this up. I must do something more Darnold-friendly with my offense instead of just running whatever I've been running, that just shows that he's just completely incompetent. But, uh, you know, it is what it is. We beat the Redskins. We've strung two wins, to get, two wins together. You know, we beat the Giants. Now we beat the Redskins. So I, I want to celebrate that. But I want to get your thoughts on this, man. What are your thoughts about the performance of Griffin? This guy has stepped up, stepped in, been a major relief valve for Darnold, and he's been able to make plays out there, man. How do you feel about his performance? I'm very happy, very encouraged with Griffin. The guy, when he, you know, he's making plays, he's running really crisp routes. Um, really, really happy with him. And you know what? It seems like Darnold, those tight ends are very valuable to him. You know, it seems like whether it's Herndon or Griffin or even Wesco in some cases, he's able to really make those guys look really good. And, Joe, you know that. Even back at SC, 
you know, the tight ends that Sam had there, he had a good connection with them. So, you know, I'm really happy with Griffin. You know, he's starting to figure out uh, what he needs to do, and it seems like these guys are starting to shake loose of that Adam Gase negativity, that nastiness, and it seems like they're going out there, and when Gase says one thing, they're kind of, you know, doing the opposite. At least that's no. I mean, like, again, Come the theory. on, man! You gotta I'm keep not, the guy I'm not I really think that's what's happening. You've I think when Gaze comes and he this. calls some nonsense play, horrendous. they're audible into something else. No, no, that's what I think. It's just working. And you just got to. You just got to give him credit. If it's working, it's working. No. Uh-uh, I'm not giving him credit at all. I'm sorry, I'm not giving him credit at all. You know what? You know what? When you know when the coach goes out there and tells you to do some nonsense, and you are okay, coach, and you're doing the opposite. You but, know, the team, and, but the things the things they're doing now are what we told them to do for five weeks. Roll Sam out of the pocket. Use Le'Veon Bell as a receiver. Get Ryan Griffin more involved. Use Jamison Crowder more involved. Get Blau Powell in the game. All the things we've been saying, he's finally doing. So maybe he's learning his lessons, and they're improving the offense. And he gets credit for that. He's getting credit for doing what he's expected to do? <laughs> hey, man, you know least, what I mean? At least, like, at least he can make adjustments. We said he doesn't make adjustments. Uh, now he's making it, and you're getting credit for it. Sid, you want to, everybody <laughs> said, everybody fits the moan. Sam Darnold's not improving. Sam Darnold's not improving. The Are last two weeks serious? he did. He gets credit for it. Tyson, we literally just played. This is this troll job is crazy. Now you just spread misinformation. We just played two really bad football teams, two really bad teams. It you want to talk about better? adjustments? There, there was a lack of adjustments all throughout this time. We we just got done Dude, talking they about. A, they played one a bad Dolphins team and they lost. One of our. No, they played a Dolphins team that was inspired. That wanted to kill Adam Gaze, wanted to body him, in which they did. A Dolphins team that came out and he could not make adjustments in that game either. You look at this Redskins game, we just had a call and talk about it. We went dead in the third quarter. For goodness sake, he is running dive plays They were blowing, they were blowing out. They were bored. It, it's taken him 11 weeks to figure out how to put together an right. offense that will somewhat help Sam Darnold. 11 weeks after getting him killed, and it's just Darnold going into his it offense. Out. Going into his offense and saying, hey, look, this is not working. Come on. Come on, Tyson. Look, I understand your trolls, but now you spent – now you're spreading misinformation. Look, he's got to do this against more competitive teams. But if you look throughout this season when we played more competitive teams, he's gotten smashed. He's gotten smashed. He played the Browns, which are more competitive. He got smashed. The offense mm-hmm. was terrible. The Pats absolutely destroyed us. The, the Bills, we couldn't get around. Like, all these other teams that we play, hell, we just got beat by the Jags. Jags completely destroyed them. With some we of the just same won two in a row. Saw we can't play very well. We beat the Giants and the Redskins. Everybody wrote teams, them off. Everybody wrote them off. And if they would have lost the Giants, are rock bottom. I know you can those only two play teams who's we just played are rock bottom. Come on, man. Come on. You, you just no, and, and guys, now. this Have is you know what this. I, I'm sorry. You know what? <laughs> yeah, it's Sam Darnold. It, it's, it's Darnold. It's him. It's not gays. Trust me, it is not gays. Like, don't do not. Jeff oh. do not buy into that. It is not gays. Do not believe that. It's Darnold. It's Greg Williams. In my opinion, he's the real coach on this football team. I think, you know, Gase, he's just the rube. He, yeah, he needs to go somewhere. Hey, Greg Williams, Sam Darnold, that's what's playing those games right now. So that's the truth. That's Have a good night, man. Thanks for, thanks for calling in, man. Joe, I, just, I, just oh, man. I mean, if you're going to if you're gonna rip Gaze for the losses, you got to give him credit for the victories. Well, listen, first off, I want to thank uh, James for calling in. Look, I don't think anyone's, you know, destroying ga- or not necessarily he giving Gaze, you know, cri- look, they're saying this. He look, yes, did. he's the head coach. We want to get. No, they're, they're keeping perspective is what they're doing. They're saying, yeah, Gaze was he's the head coach. The team did win. Okay, congratulations. You got to win. But that doesn't mean that you're a good head coach. That doesn't mean that you're doing your job to full potential as we expect if you to do. If you're only as good as your last that. performance, they won their Jeez. last two. <laughs> that's the thing is that well that, that's not what it is here you're not just as good as your last performance because we can have we have a whole history of gays we have a huge sample size of who he is He's as three a and coach three and offensive stand coordinator on. oh my goodness did you do but that's that's not six games is not all this season and he's three and three he's at 500 and he's played two that's bad better, teams. Than, better than top bowl so if you remove that 
If you remove that Redskins win and you remove that Giants win, he's one and three. So why would you remove him? Like, but why would you remove him? That's, that's, that's what ridiculous. they played. Three and three with Sam Darnold. Uh, you play two bad teams back to back. Enough with the trolling. This guy. They beat the Raiders, man. They incompetent. beat the Raiders. Look out. So Batting down the hatches. He's incompetent on multiple levels. He's incompetent on multiple levels, and we've seen it. It took his young quarterback, and what Sam's only 22, 23. It took his 22, 23 year old quarterback to walk into his office, okay, and say, listen, this is not working. We need to make changes, and here's what we need to do. And you're the offensive guru? Are you. Serious? <laughs> Do you think Mahomes or has to walk into Andy Reid's office and go, "Listen, Andy, this ain't working. We need to do no." Andy Reid is sitting around with other coaches. Uh, Andy, Andy Reid's been in the league for five years. Um, and Adam Gaze has been in the league what four years now? Uh, likely longer than that, but he's been a head coach for four years now. Come Andy on, Reed's he been can figure it out, him, man. He's, he's like, this is this is this is crazy. This is crazy. And Adam Gaze has been around the block as well. This is not his first year as a coach in the NFL. It isn't. He's been an offensive coordinator for quite a long time. He's been a head coach for four years now. He's been a head coach for four years in the same division. We have not beat one team in the AFC East, and that includes a yes. Dolphins team that is in a full blown yes. tank. We, we could got beat two them. coming up, and they could beat both of them. This is crazy. This is crazy. Your troll job is crazy. The point is that. Adam Gaze is incompetent, and we've seen it throughout this entire stretch. He needs to be consistent the against good football changes. teams. We we got a decent team coming up in the Raiders that is making a playoff push. They're trying to put their you know names in for a wild card spot, a wild card spot, or whatever. Bounce right at we'll, Stadium. Okay, if that you know that's that's what you're telling us. That's not what I'm saying. I'm keeping my perspective. <laughs> I know what's going on here. I want to see us go in there and take care of business before I'm counting us completely destroying the Raiders. All right, we're going to go to Big Green, who I'm sure is going to agree with me as well. Big Green, what's up, man? Oh, not much, man. What are, what are you smoking, man? I want some of that. <laughs> Why is that, man? We won two in a row. Oh, man. You're, I can't believe you're buying in. No. <laughs> maybe if we Dude, beat Baltimore, just maybe. Four touchdowns. Yeah, against the Redskins defense that... Hasn't showed up hey, in, what, 20 years? It's progress, man. It's progress. He's running around. He's making some NFL. Joe even said it. He made some great NFL throws, which that means progress. It's all good things, man. Yeah, you just keep building. Crappy teams. Joe said it. Yeah. Listen, crappy team. <laughs> but listen, I'll tell you what. Beat a bad we go down a one we, we saw a great throw with, 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 with Jeremy Bates was our offensive coordinator. We saw great flashes from Darnold Finn, too. These are two bad teams. That does not mean that Adam Gaze is a good offensive coordinator. That means Sam is going out there and making plays and doing what he's got to do on his end. But we also saw Sam struggle this year as well, take big shots, be left out with no help, with protections, calls, or anything. We also saw Sam regress this year, too. We, there was a time we were, you know, fans were calling in talking about drafting another quarterback because nobody believed in Sam. They completely threw him away. There were people calling and him Adam a And Adam Gase turned the entire team ago. around. No, he did not turn the entire team around. They were, at, they were at rock bottom, and it all turned around. Oh my goodness! You're 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 completely <laughs> crazy right now. You're completely trolling. This is nuts. But I, I want to talk they to the They flew callers, airplanes. Wait, they, Joe, they flew airplanes. Know. Everybody in the media was saying fire and fire and fire. What's happened since then? The entire team has rallied and won two games in convincing fashion. No, no. What's happened since then? Is yes, we that's played what happened. Two, we've played two garbage teams that are completely awful. I mean, garbage. And, hell, the Giants weren't even at full strength, and they're still a bad football team, and we beat those two bad teams because we were coming off of getting spanked by the Jags and getting beat by the Dolphins of full-blown tank mode. So let's, let's, let's not get too crazy, okay? This is completely ridiculous. But I want to get to the caller, man. I, I want to get your thoughts on Darnold and what you're seeing from him out there. I am seeing uh... – Good quarterback doing the best he can with one of the worst offensive lines in the league with an incompetent head coach. But I'm going to go down there to a one jet drive, drop off my resume, my experience as I play Madden. So I could I could be the offensive coordinator for the Jets. <laughs> so. And yeah, we got to build the O line. That's it. Get rid of Gage. Would you bring? I, I want him fired at week three. Alex? 
Would you bring back Alex Lewis and Kelvin Beecham? Alex Lewis, yes. Beecham, no. And what? Why not Beecham? Would you you're in a draft or look to free agency? I'm looking uh for yeah for uh, offensive line yeah that uh, guard uh, uh, uh right guard what's what's his name? <sighs> I'm not sure if it was the Redskins guard or the San Francisco. But uh, he's gonna, sheriff, I, think, I think you're talking about sheriff. Brandon. Yeah, yeah, sheriff. Yeah. Yeah. Pay him whatever he wants. Get him in the door. <laughs> Pay him whatever <laughs> he wants. Get him in the door. <laughs> Thanks for calling it. We appreciate it. I don't know, Joe. We've had some weird calls, man. That was uh, wasn't really sure what the answers were there, but um, but that's the one thing with the offensive line. You got Shell, you got Beecham, you got Alex Lewis. I mean, I could see bringing back Shell and Lewis um, and Beecham, depending on the price, because we need quality depth and quality linemen, and then hope to draft somebody and bring in some more prominent players as well. Yeah. Well, first of all, I want to thank uh, Green for calling in. You know, he he he, he spit his knowledge, but listen. I, I could, I mean, Shell. Uh, if you want to bring him back, fine. If you don't, fine. Lewis is a guy that I think can can be brought back, um, you know, and, and and be a depth guy. I'd like to see us go out and get better offensive linemen. Period. I understand Lewis has done a decent job here. You know, Shell has been shaky at best. I don't like Kelvin Beecham, but he's been all right. I guess these last or the last game, he was okay. But, no, we need to go out and get elite offensive linemen. That's what we need to do. We need to attack the market, whether that be via the draft, whether that be via your agency. I think it's going to be a mix of, of the two, to be absolutely honest. I don't think you necessarily want a, a full-blown rookie uh, free agency or a full-blown rookie line out there because it's going to take them quite a bit of time to learn the NFL, understand the speed of the game, understand what they're seeing out there. So I think we'll attack the market. We'll get a couple of free agents. Brandon Sheriff might be. You know, here next year, that, that could be some help. Uh, there's also some guys, again, that could shake loose. The names will start to filter out there again once we get more towards the offseason and we start talking about that stuff. But, yeah, offensive line is definitely going to be something you pay attention to. But I think that Lewis can be a solid depth guy. And even if you bring Shell back, maybe he could be a solid depth guy for you too. Um, but we'll, we'll see what happens. But I don't think you have to necessarily bring you know any of those guys back if you really don't want to. Uh, we could go really and attack uh, offensive line and free agency and do what we need to do. Well, Joe, I got to say, this has been a quite an entertaining two hours, hearing all the different opinions and hear all the, the hesitancy of buying in and the, the concerns of just drinking the Kool-Aid and, and just, you know, having some happy jet feelings. I understand how it is, man. It's, I've been there. I understand. But when you finally see the light and you realize what's ahead of us on Sunday, you're really going to enjoy things, man. Wow, what's ahead of us on Sunday? Right, look, we're going to talk about the Raiders. The Raiders, uh, I'm on the West Coast. Uh, uh, there's times I'm forced to watch them. They are, they're a very physical football team up front. I mean, their offensive line is serious. Like, Good. <laughs> bring them on. You know, I, I know a lot of people laugh because they got rid of Kalichi and everybody was like, oh, what's going to happen? They, they're, they are very physical up front, and they get after it. Now, again, we're going to talk about them Friday, but if you think the Raiders are some type of pushover and that we're just going to walk Whoa. through them, especially when I'm we're having to walk through them, I think we're going to beat them. Yeah, you, but you said it like, oh, they're coming in. We're just going to we're going to take care of business. Right. They're coming on our turf. There's we're no reason. Them. Like, we have to raise listen. our standards. We've have to, we got to stop okay. being like these, oh, woe is me. We can, can we get by this team? No, we get some confidence. Embrace your inner Jamal okay. Adams and believe. I'll tell you what. I'll tell you what. Well, all that's going to be tested because, man, we got, you know, we talked about it. We got issues struggling, you know, covering tight ends and stuff. They're coming in with Waller, who's one of the better tight ends in the league. Josh Jacobs. I mean, they got guys. Carr can throw the football around. They got some guys over there, oh. especially defensively. Oh. They can get after it defensively. They got pass rushers. They can get after it. Like, this, this, this Raiders team is pretty physical, and it seems like they figured stuff out, and they've got away from the drama from A.B. and all that nonsense that was going well, on Well, we figured things like, out, too, so it's fine. So both teams figured it out, but one team's going to be on we're, the list. Like they just don't travel well to the East Coast. Well, to bring I'll all the little what, we, fans we, we, and the makeups and all like the dark Vader <laughs> figures and all this other nonsense, bring it all to that life and go home today. Period. Hey, man, listen, listen. Well, we'll see about that because those might be the only fans in mm -hmm. that life. We know, uh, I mean, Raiders fans do travel. They do do their thing, and they, they will uh, fill out MetLife. I mean, look, we'll see. We'll talk about that on Friday. But, 
if you think that everything's just hunky dory, <laughs> that yep. you know, we just gonna go on and smash people now because you beat two bad teams, man, I don't know what to tell you. Joe, I got three words for you. Are you ready? Go ahead, Here man. we come. Oh boy. <laughs> And here you go. Oh, my God. This is crazy. You are complete All right, troll. So as, we, as, we, as we wrap things up here, uh, first of all, we want to thank everybody who listens and subscribes. Obviously, we're on Instagram and Twitter, at Talk Jets Radio, YouTube, Let's Talk Jets Radio, and all of the podcast platforms, uh, Apple Podcasts, iTunes, Spreaker, SoundCloud, all those things, some Podbean places and things like that. Um, so we appreciate it, and as you said, subscribe, leave feedback. We try to interact as much as we can. Uh, we get a lot of it's, it's just fun. So, and Joe, this has been a lot of fun. I've thoroughly enjoyed this show. It is your time yeah, to shine. Yeah, yes. I mean, you you are a crazy troll. Listen, I'm the man of the people. I'm here for the people. Let me share with you from our Facebook page. Everyone, go on Facebook, search Let's Talk Jets Radio. Like that page. Our content's up there. Go ahead and give a listen. Message us. We'll message you right back. We love going back and forth with folks about this football team. Also, leave us some feedback. We love hearing about what you folks think we do here on Let's Talk Jets Radio. I'm also on Twitter as well at Young J zero 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 at three zeros. Go ahead and follow me. I'll follow you right back. You want to troll me? No issues. I am the troll that lives under the bridge. I will have my Darnold jersey on, and I will troll you right back, all right? I'm also on YouTube as well, at YoungJ00. That's two zeros on YouTube, three on Twitter. I do videos about the Jets, continue them every single week. I also talk about other teams as well, because I do a weekly pick them. So subscribe to my content on there as well. If you want to troll me, go ahead and troll me on there as well, and I'll troll you right back. And as always, people, when you see me in person, okay, it is Show arms out, money! chest open. Man, you know, you trolling me right now. You didn't troll everybody else tonight. This is crazy. This might be your trolliest show of all time, dude. It's it's completely crazy. I mean, your cup running over with troll juice. I mean, it is nuts, man. It is absolutely crazy the way you just you just you were so you were just a prime troll, dude. It was crazy. I mean, it just had it to the brim filled with troll juice. It was crazy. But listen, folks, don't listen to Roush. He's, he's just trolling all day and all night. When you folks see me in person, it's arms out, chest open, free hugs for everyone. I want to thank you folks for listening. Without you people, we are absolutely nothing. Thank you for taking the time out of your day to listen and call in. You folks are the absolute best. And, again, everyone, get involved cfbnj.org, the Community Food Bank in New Jersey. Help someone get to their next meal. There's a lot of people out there looking, trying to get some help, trying to get some food. It's the holidays. Help them out in any way that you can. Again, cfbnj.org. I also want to thank, uh, thank Mr. David Goldstein again for coming on and spreading the awareness of hunger with us. Enjoy the rest of your week. We'll be back talking Jets Raiders Friday night, 8 o'clock. And that's going to be a doozy. So if I were you guys, I would definitely listen. Talk to you guys later.